Hmm. Hmm. Let's see how that goes. Good morning. It is Devil's Night tradition. Good morning. That is in Detroit, and that's today's topic. I know we won't jump into that right away. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting that weird feedback. Good morning, good morning. So, what up, though? It is Saturday. Like I said, it is Devil's Night. There you go, my feedback. Uh, welcome to the show. Yours truly, Dreek Swift. We're here with Tori Savage. -Kitty. Alex is starting in the U of M game, so he's not going to be joining us today. <laughs> Uh, funny, that, funny. You know what? That would have been pretty cool. Okay, I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday. <laughs> I was talking to Steve, and he's like, "Man, you need to get some um, some journalist cred uh, credentials." And I'm like, "Yeah, they're they're free. You just gotta get them, and then you submit them to the different organizations. Let's say uh, the NCAA, you know, or whatever, and then you can get into the game, game and cover the game." So really? I'm thinking. Just thinking about it, and I, I told Alex before, prior, I think I should buy him journalists or one of us. State of Arizona oh, employees, Commercial. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona. <laughs> and we promise to always um, do the same for you. This open enrollment, you have the same great plans to choose. Oh, get your plan. Yeah, switch your plan. So uh, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, if you're looking for a sponsor, there you go. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm thinking about buying some journalists uh um credentials so that would be cool so he could go cover mm -hmm. you know that how awesome would that have been right to go cover them? <laughs> that would have been so awesome well, them and spartans i know we're going to talk a little bit uh it's it is uh right now a uh, pretty hot topic they're both seven and all so but we'll mm -hmm. go into that later i'm not really going to talk about sports because definitely we're missing alex today um, so I don't want to feel like you're out of your realm. Thanks. Like I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I, you can talk and I'll agree. Yeah. You just, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. And then I'll end it with a go green. Go green. <laughs> so your mom just checked in and she, she's a U of M fan, right? She is. We are a house divided. She house is. divided. Yes. And, and, uh, and Lions in, in Green Bay as well. Wow. So from Oh yeah. yeah. She, she don't give a fuck. She don't NFL, give a fuck. <laughs> NFL to college, straight down the middle. Uh she probably and shout and go blue right now at the screen. I'm I, surprised I can... she's not a Blackhawks fan or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Don't listen. Don't don't encourage her behavior, please. <laughs> uh, Father-in-law, he was a Blackhawks fan, so uh, he was. You know, he would watch the Red Wings because he grew up watching Red. But he was a Blackhawk fan. Uh, you know, the Blackhawks during the seventies, they were. You know, they were. Uh, I don't know if they were a dynasty, but you know, they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With and That's then shit. yeah, he said that he got a lot of autographs when he. Um, you know, when he was a kid, Blackhawks and stuff like that. Yeah, so. Oh, there she is. I see her comments now. Red, so Wings. Blue, red Yeah, she's a Red Wings fan for sure. Yeah, yeah, I know, because I know when we were in town and we said we wanted to go to Red Wings, she's like, ah, let's go. Oh, wow. she was so bummed out she couldn't go. She was just happy to be nominated, though. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah she, but she was sad. So I said, next time. Next time we'll go for sure. We had a good time going to the game. Yeah, there. yeah, it was fun. More than yep. uh, everybody we had joined. Amazing us. seats right in the center. Dom was glued to the game. Right, he was the only one watching it. Right. <laughs> he yeah, he's a he's a true athlete at heart. <laughs> he's played sports I mean, was, his whole life, so he was he was in it. Uh, you know the whole preseason thing, the shootout. I, I was like, what is this? Uh, but I thought it was kind of cool though. Yeah, the, I guess the shootout. Cool. I don't know. It kind of hyped you up a little bit. I like seeing the battle up. on the ice. No, they, you know what they should have? Uh, a, fight? A, a fight at the end. More fights. <laughs> I knew you were oh, going to Okay, who's going up right now? We're going we're right. to have a 
of the they, ice. They, they, they throw their gloves off. You know, yeah. it's funny. Um, Michelle, my friend Michelle that we that we brought to Detroit, this she had never been to a hockey game before, so oh. she was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then and then when some shit started right. popping off, I'm like, "Oh, oh, a fight!" She's like, "A fight!" I said, "A fight, girl. Watch. There might be blood on the ice." I, mean, I want to <laughs> be like, racist a little bit. Black people don't go to hockey games. They don't. Black people don't go to hockey. Some black people do. You know, you, you got your Tiger Woods of hockey, and that's uh, amazing. Well, they- when I when about in the nineties I started seeing more black people actually playing hockey, but you know what it was, uh, and I, and I've had this conversation. Racist with, white people, <laughs> that's the problem. Well, you know what it was is was basketball traditionally, maybe possibly baseball, uh, but hockey it was exp- it's expensive sport. <laughs> Very. Oh, so, so, uh, urban uh, family like a Latino or a black, they couldn't afford to go play hockey. My dad worked two jobs to fucking put me on the ice. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like I said, traditionally, it's more, it's an expensive sport. Basketball, what do you got to do? Buy a basketball? You know what I mean? Baseball, right. it's expensive. That's, it's just traveling. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. Ball gets expensive. Oh. All, all these mm-hmm. those, those types of sports get expensive. And basketball, they could just go to the park and play basketball, right? Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. They start getting better. But hockey is like, okay, well, you know, if you're in Detroit, you don't have access. There was a – there's a, the ice rink in Clark Park, but it was only in the wintertime. So, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Traditionally, blacks and Hispanics didn't get on ice. Uh, right. You know, and uh, Dominic, uh, a good friend of the uh, of mine that we played hockey, Billy, we played hockey. But our parents made good money. We were Hispanics, but we – our fathers worked two jobs to put us on the ice because right. – you know, you're got you're talking so uh, basketball. Basketball is what thirty bucks, twenty bucks. We're talking thousands of dollars for equipment. Thousands, thousands, yeah, thousands of dollars, and we need it, and we need it all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So we need skates. Skates were two hundred dollars in the eighties. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, who's buying that shit? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, that's funny you said that. Um, when so Dom never played hockey, he played football, lacrosse, but he he played motocross. Like he and that's he, even more that's targeted, even, right. So so gotta, I put him on a bike, I that, put him on a motorcycle thousands. <laughs> when I put him on a motorcycle at four years old, he took to it and I was like, Oh, he can do this as a sport. That, okay, not realizing, right? I'm a young mom, and right. next thing you know, I'm like I would, I would compare it to, um, the hockey or the gymnastics, you know, like it was thousands and you have to train and one thing goes wrong on the bike. I'm literally fixing a motorcycle every week. I'm buying parts every week, parts and gear. And that's just the, the bike, not the gear you have to wear. And and then the travel, you got to get something to pull it. You have to go to these race places where you pull up and everybody there, their parents have like semis with the kid's face right. on the side, okay. right? Right. They, right? These kids are homeschooled. They got their own track, right? They eat, sleep, breathe dirt. And, and they eat a sandwich and they go back out on the track, right? And here I come. With my SUV pulling my son's dirt bike, hoping to God that the one part doesn't go because I don't have a trailer. And let me tell you, my son pulls off with a trophy. That's a really good feeling, right? Mm-hmm. But but I would literally be like, okay, am I buying groceries or is Dom racing this weekend? Well, looks like I'm eating peanut butter and jelly. He's racing, <laughs> right? And and make it happen. And and he did that for and Zach did it as well when he was able to do it. And Whew, let me tell you, I look back now, I'm like, damn, I could have had a fucking mansion. <laughs> so some of those, you know, I think there needs to be programs in, in the urban areas that, that uh, allow some of these blacks, Latinos to play these games. So another expensive sport, yeah. you play tennis, very expensive. Tennis, very, very expensive. expensive. Golf, that's why there's only a, a black Filipino Golf, Tiger Woods, you know, <laughs> right? Because these sports are expensive. They're not. Yeah, you expensive. roll off the driveway. You're three hundred dollars in already before you get right. off. Your, you're like, That's, okay, this is going to be a five hundred dollar day. These sports are not accessible to to the people that live in the urban areas because they're expensive, right? So, Very. Yeah, so that's why you didn't see uh, blacks and Latinos playing basketball. I mean, uh, hockey, hockey and stuff like that because it was. 
very, just, very. Like, yeah. Yeah. We need, I used, we need some programs. We need some. some I played, uh, my dad played me, because I played for so many different at the same time. And I played mm. in Pell. My dad, my dad had me play in Pell uh, because he wanted to. What is to. that? Pell is uh, Detroit, like, um, so it's a, it's kind of like a poor man's hockey. Um, okay. Because Pell would get all their equipment donated. So they, Pell has oh, baseball, nice. baseball, hockey. I don't know if they have football or not. But they, um, so they would get a lot of their stuff donated. And my dad, That's would, awesome. my dad would try to raise money for the league. Uh, there was less fortunate because there was, you know, it, so it was, it was basically, so this Pell was designed for the urban, uh, urban people that lived in the urban areas that couldn't, mm -hmm. afford, couldn't afford to play hockey. That's so they, awesome. So he, we would, uh, you know, he would go out and raise money and buy, get skates for kids and stuff like that because kids couldn't afford skates. You yeah, know, right? and he knew how great it was, and he yeah. saw you doing it, and so he would, oh, that's he, awesome. He wanted to make sure other kids could experience that too. Yeah, so he would coach Pal. Uh, another uh, Billy, that's a friend of the show or a friend of mine. Uh, his dad coached Pal baseball, so we played oh. we played uh, baseball. You know, and and uh, baseball. That's awesome. Uh, baseball can get quite expensive. With baseball is expensive. Expensive too, yeah. Yeah. A lot <laughs> especially of if you're good. <laughs> yes, but a lot of that stuff, so it makes it unaffordable for urban kids. So, yeah, I think there needs to be more programs for. I uh, I absolutely agree. Just to get them off the streets, you know what I mean. Not so they're not mm -hmm. joining gangs and and selling drugs and stuff like that. And that was the biggest thing. And I think that's why I probably I'm a square now because you a square now. Yeah, I'm just kind of a square. <laughs> Yeah, I heard square. I'm a little yeah. bit of a circle. I'm a little circle over here, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm a circle. Now, being on a team, though, just in general, keep you out of, what'd you say? You're an hourglass, not a circle. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you know your shapes. Good job. There you go. <laughs> and I was bad in kindergarten, and I couldn't color inside the lines. What do you know? I've come, I've, I've come a long way. I'm a long way. <laughs> you owe it all to the hockey. <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, I always um, my kids, they were like, Papa, you don't draw or you don't, because my dad can draw, right? And I can, I, oh, I can, can he? Yeah, my dad could draw. Uh, my dad used to draw stuff and, and stuff like oh, that's that. That's awesome. And uh, funny because my curls can draw, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Nurse, talented. Nati has kind of explored her, her drawing now and she's gotten better. Uh, but you know, I, 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 I'm a stick figure guy. Like I can't draw. really, yeah, <laughs> I can draw. I can't draw. I don't know why yeah. I, I used draw. to draw all the time. I draw, um, caricatures of my friends. So mm. I get my friend and I just, you know, my, my one girlfriend, she had pictures of her all over her bedroom. Cause that's what I would just, you know, hang out with her. And so she'd be my model and I'd just be drawing, um, mm. Cartoon characters. I liked to draw um draw the fonts. But that didn't work out because I couldn't draw. Yeah. You know where they would <laughs> get in, I would draw them. Yeah. <laughs> draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> I'll draw you and then they say, Well, let me see what it looks like. And I'm like, uh, it doesn't <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'm not done yet. It's not you can't see it until it's finished. I'm just, just here for late, just lay there. Just visuals. Right. Draw me like one of your French girls, Jack. Yeah. There you go. Your French <laughs> whores, Jack. Draw me like one of your French whores. Yeah, there you go. I don't right. think that was the French. That was not my French accent. <laughs> the French, that was your jersey. The French whores. Jane Rossi is a whore. Draw <laughs> me like Jane Rossi, Jack. Uh, Jane Rossi. Where's Jane Rossi at? I'll be in a whore. She's in. Uh, what was her What was her apartment number? <laughs> Fuck! I can't. I knew you were gonna ask me. My brain, my brain isn't working today. Come on, <laughs> make me Google Jane Rossi's apartment. <laughs> Are you looking it up? Yeah. <laughs> Three oh four. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, I found Jane Rossi's telephone number. <laughs> 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 That's not the one I'm looking for. Oh man. <laughs> I'm not looking for that one. 
Is it Janet right now? I guess. Yeah. It was a Janet. Janet Wasi as a whore. <laughs> we always just said Jane. Oh, and two and she was in two R. Oh, two R. Mm -hmm. Two R. Janet Wasi is a whore. She's two R. You tell everyone who walks in this building that in two R Wasi, you are nothing but a whore. Is this the superintendent? <laughs> yes, I want you to know, sir, that you have a whole living in two R. <laughs> Do you hear me? Oh, Janice. Janice. Yes, Janice. Is that, is that so you? Superintendent? <laughs> Living in 2R. Like, what? Maybe the old me might have done something like that. Can you get in the 60s, you're getting thrown out because you're a whore. Because you're a whore. Yeah, what do you think? Um... I mean, put the letter on it and wear it. Yeah. Janice. She fucked everything up with that movie anyways, remember? It was her yeah. fault. She got everything got she was messy. Messy Cocoa. So, so No, no, that was the it. other friend. That was the other girlfriend. He started They're fucking. They're all whores. Okay. <laughs> They're all y'all whores. I have one of those t shirts. Did you um did you ever get one of those shirts that says you're all whores from um I'm sure it doesn't have the accent with it, but from the um, bar, the well in Detroit. No. Their entire staff wears shirts at the bar that says, you're all whores. It's the best. Oh, and you can buy them. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. I, was thinking about, I was thinking about the Terry Sugg story that I've told you guys where, you know, I knocked on the door and the, and it's, the, it's his fucking whole it's, side bitch and his family. Yeah. <laughs> And then I call, and then I call the wife, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, I'm just wondering if you still want internet at that house." And she's like, "What house?" <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Whoopsie. Yeah, you outed him. You narked on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I outed his whole family. She's like, "This motherfucker got a whole family, plus he getting internet over there. I'm paying for the internet." <laughs> yeah. Sure <laughs> you pay for the internet for your side. He's paying for the internet for your side, bitch. That coming out of your it wasn't he in the news like um recently messy too, right? Well, not recently, but he's he was messy, right? Yeah, Did he like choke her up or something? Yeah, he choked her up on uh on uh Hollywood uh, freeway. Yeah, he was choking mm -hmm. her down the freeway or something, and she was hanging out the window. <laughs> was this before or after you narked on his side bitch? Uh this is the whole this was before, but yeah, he had a he had a problem, you know. This was before I think uh, it made it to like uh, the big thing where they were showing a lot of NFL guys who were doing domestic violence, but he's yeah, yeah. domestic violence for a while with his. Wife. Oh, he's been whooping on him for a minute. Yeah, they have a love, love hate relationship. Mm -hmm. so, They're all getting whooped on. Side bitch got whooped on too, probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah and yeah. then here comes Drake. Yeah. Let me tell you a little story, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's no getting a beating today. Well, it was the neighbor. He's like, do you know who that is? Is down there? And I was like, no. He's like, that's Terry Suggs, side bitch. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the neighbor knew way too much. This <laughs> Terry Savage. Yeah, that's his side bitch. I mean, he got a whole family, a bunch of kids. You're, that, that night, were you thinking about it the entire time? Yeah, because I'm thinking, like how, old... how, how do you hide a whole ass family? Hey, you an I'm NFL player. <laughs> Yes, I, I mean we're talking about kids. His like, yeah, his daddy wore them slip and slide shoes. Slippity <laughs> dippity shoes. Yeah, if your dad owns, he, he definitely has other kids in the house. <laughs> right? Dad didn't wear the shoes. Mm, I didn't. Um, I didn't uncle? have a dad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So my grandpa, def my daddy definitely wore them shoes. So I got to be honest with you, I, I really didn't know my paternal grandparent. Is that what that is? That's the paternal. <laughs> yeah, right? father uh, side. Mm -hmm. Mom's dad. He was just really sweetheart or whatever, as, as I knew him growing up. Um, but he had the slip and slide shoes, and he had a whole ass family, like another family. For real? See, yeah, there's something in those shoes. Yeah, for I don't real. know what. So what happened was like pimp, uh, pimp. Sprinkles in them or something. He's originally from from uh, Waco, Texas. Those are Texans. Mm. Mm. Real Southern Bell, uh, mm. back everything. Like you know what I mean. So he was mm -hmm. a he was a Mexican Baptist, right from Texas. <laughs> Damn. 
he uh, he basically had, I guess he went back home or whatever, and my grandmother was in Michigan, and he he basically did the whole. Hold on, let me uh, pull it up. Uh, and and uh, I, 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 you, got, you got a clip? Yeah, I got a clip. Hold on. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, the, I think the manufacturing of the slip and slide, the slippity slips, the slippy slide shoes. I think they put like little like pimp juice in them or something. They they're made with pimp juice and sprinkles pimp of juice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> whole yeah. water pimp juice and whole water. Okay, some, there is some some kind of magic in those shoes that makes magic you have whole the- ass families on the side. And a whole bunch of Ill- illegitimate children and lots of child support. Those are child support liberty dues. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was intimidated by you. Yeah. Richie. I think I'm falling in love with you. He starts crying. (laughs) Here we go. Yeah, so this is probably my grandfather making his phone call uh, to my grandmother. Oh, my God. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Uh Uh-uh. Has he got the shoes on? No, he don't got the shoes on. and He took them off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give, give me Holly Court, court uh, 55377. Five, five, seven, seven. Seven. Yeah, Hello, Hello it's Daddy. Daddy. Hey, hey, darling, put, put Mommy, mommy on, the on the phone. phone. Yeah, yeah Barbara, it's Richie. Yeah, yeah look, it, I ain't never coming home no more. Take, Take it <laughs> easy. <laughs> That's your grandfather, huh? Father, yeah. So what happened was... Oh, so this is where the pimp juice comes from in I your did. family, huh? My mom said that my grandfather was a rolling stone, you know. Oh, that's another way to call it. That. <laughs> that's yeah. another yeah. term, rolling stone. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what she said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're a, getting you them damn shoes. That's it. Yeah. Christmas, everybody get <laughs> drink them slippity doos, slippy uh, but- uh, slippy slides. <laughs> Never started an alternative family, though. You know. No, that well, that's good. That's a plus. Put that on your resume. I <laughs> you you say that. it surprisingly. All right. My ex wife had like all multiple families out there, but only one. Mm, multiple families, multiple personalities. Why are we going to compare? No. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, this let's is- get her some shoes that's- too. This is another uh, favorite scene of mine, but uh, yeah, I think we talked about this in the past. One of my favorite movies was Harlem Nights. Um, mm-hmm. There's so many comedians in it. Uh, you know, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, uh, Red Fox. But this is so. This is the same based on the same scene, but uh, but this is uh, Sunshine. Up last year, who's gonna make it this year, Mr. Richie Vento? Um, Vera, I want you to put somebody on him. All right, sugar. You got, you got a girl who can turn him out? I have got a girl whose pussy is so good, if you threw it up in the air, it would turn into sunshine. <laughs> well, I don't want to meet her. I do. <laughs> I do. Don't be hiding. Don't be hiding. Your prayer said, "I don't want to meet her." <laughs> so, uh, so, I guess- so, so I have a question. You're the the whole ass side family. Like, did y'all like? Com- did they convert? You know, like, I wasn't born, so uh, yeah. So um, I wanted. To, um, I like, did wanted. Did you mesh to- together? Did it ever become blended? No, I don't believe so. So what happened is, so he met an Indian woman down there, and I guess my mom has stepbrothers. Uh, he met an Indian woman up there, and he checked up with her, and then started a family. And then he got tired of her, and then he, you know, tried to come back to my grandmother. And my grandma said, eh, "Fuck you," you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So she ended up meeting my uh, grandfather that I knew, um, even though he wasn't my paternal. To me, he was my grandfather. So yeah, that was your grandpa. 
Yeah, he was another Texan from Corpus, a uh, big Mexican. He worked on the railroads up in Michigan. Uh, yeah, my grandfather was a big guy. He was about 6'4", uh, and he worked uh, He worked at, at – at, he worked on the railroad, so he worked at uh, with Conrail. So he uh, – Millions of vulnerable Americans. Oh, reliable vulnerable Americans. Medical. I don't know. Here we go again. I don't know why these commercials just start up? I, I, I take the music away and they still come on. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the guy that I knew, uh, and then he, and my at that time my parents or my mom and my uncle Rudy, they were at the time they were teenagers at that time. So uh, okay. Yeah. So yep. So I guess my grandfather was a Rolling Stone. I would love to play that song, but guess what? We would get yeah, we get banned. So what show um, anything exciting you did yesterday besides the eye is a little on fire. I think you went to a, a new eyelash girl. Do we, have to, give, we have to give her um, what is the bad rating on the food thing? What is that called? <sighs> the, 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 called? the tomato rotten tomatoes. No, the one where you. <laughs> That you give a bad rating on. Oh, the- um, shit. Yeah. What the hell is it called? Critique? No, the one where you, if you go to a restaurant and you could say you had shitty service, um, it's shit. Oh, I don't I know. I don't know. I don't, uh, think, I don't know. You told, me, you told me it doesn't go away. It, it, uh, oh, you know a review? A Yelp yeah. review? Yeah. Can, can oh. you give her? Is, does she deserve so- a bad? You know what sucks is because she did a good job in general. Like she followed what I I, t- I told her, you know, like what I wanted, and she did that. I think her glue was just too strong, and I had an allergic reaction to her glue. Well, um, I think Gorilla Glue, right? That's what it feels like right now. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think she just put it a little too close to my lash line. On my one eye, and it's it's now irritated my eye. So, like to the point where I think I might go to the um, outpatient some point today just to get some antibiotic drops to be safe. You know, it's my eyes. Um, I've been flushing my eye, but and it feels better when I do that. But I just I want to be safe. So yeah, that's what I'm dealing with a Frankenstein eye. Um, preparing for my parents to be here in a few days. My mother and father are counting down the days till they get to come to beautiful, sunny Arizona from cold Michigan. You're cold already? It's cold. Everybody I talked to said it's cold. They got little hoodies, you know, little warm stuff on. Um, I giggled yesterday when you said, did Dom say, did you eat some butt? Because your eye was on fire. Yeah, he goes. You know, you know, my son always got the graphic ex- shit to say to I'll me. Eat some butt. We're so we're so open with each other, and like I, I've always let my children just say whatever well, they want. No, sorry, they're not. You know, right? They're not disrespectful to me or anybody else. They're very respectful children. So and here's that I, thing to you, mom. Oh, where's the hey, low? Mommy, mom. Yeah. Oh, he used to do that all the time. He, that was like one of our things, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I said, how's my eye look? He goes, man, like you've been eating ass. What happened to it? <laughs> he's like, it's fired up. You should go to the ER. You know, he's worried about me, but then he cracked yeah, the joke. Right. Yeah. So he's like, oh, you definitely look like you had your face in someone's butt. I'm like, stop. Yeah. This is serious he's, right now. He's like, skittle eye, taste the rainbow, mom. Ooh, yuck. <laughs> so, like, Ew, that looks terrible. Let me, and then he, he's like, you need to flush that. So I was um, picking up some appliances on Marketplace yesterday for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when, and, he said, when he said flush it, did he, and I know you said you flushed it. I'm surprised he didn't say, hold still, mom. Let me grab this hole real quick. Well, so we're in the car, right? And we're waiting for the guy to pull up. And I had a cup full of water with a straw. And I go, I need to do something. So I stuck my head out. Here I am in front of a stranger's house. I stuck my head out the door. And I said to Dom, I'm like, hand me some napkins. And he lined me up. This is teamwork. He lined me up with napkins so I wouldn't spill water down my shirt and look like a crazy person when this person pulled up. And I just took the straw and I was like dumping water in my eye. And let me tell you, that felt so much better. It was terrible. So yeah, I, got this Frank, I got this Frankenstein eye. Frank- so I'm wearing a hat today. 
I had to hide it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't put no makeup on in my eyes. I don't, know. I don't. You know, I usually don't check the weather during the winter time. Uh, you know, my parents left because my dad was like bundling up like Christmas story before he left. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I. Yeah. I that's why I equated. He's like, I said, like, cold. He's like, hell yeah, it's cold. That's why I left. I can't stand that place. Uh, most of the Mexicans that I know that are related to me here, uh, they all said, oh, it's too cold back there. That's why yeah, I left. That. But that's why I left. And I'm like, damn. Did you just see what she commented? My mother. 52 today, counting the hours. Tomorrow at work is Happy Dillagaff Day. So Halloween. No, well, my mother is going on vacation and coming here. So, and she's, you know, in management and, and has a whole... Uh, slew of employees and a crew. So mm-hmm. her tomorrow, yes. Yeah, so her tomorrow is her last day at work to, before she goes on vacation, and her whole staff knows that day as her Dillagaff day. She said she lets her staff do whatever. She don't care. Do you know what Dillagaff stands for? Uh, don't do I it. look? Do I do I look like I give a fuck? Oh. <laughs> and yeah. So she wishes yeah. that to everybody tomorrow. So that's her day. She's pretty excited. Well, safe travels to your mom. Uh, I hope they're not flying any of the airlines that I don't know if she's checked her. A lot, you know. There's no, this, she she's a Delta flyer. Yeah, because you know a lot of that stuff. You know, there's strikes. I think it was American. A lot, all these people that are are going on strike. So, hope make sure you're checking mm-hmm. the airport before you go. So absolutely. Yeah, I forgot about that. Sad. Uh, you know, was, Halloween. Look at, Nurissa, look at this. Oh, sorry. Like, go ahead. No, I was going to say. Uh, I took Nurissa to work yesterday. She dressed up as it. That was her costume last year. She usually keeps a lot of her costumes, and she wears oh, them me too. all week or whatever. Uh, yeah. so she dressed up as it, uh, and uh, she did a really nice job. So I think I bought her a costume for tomorrow, uh, a while back, but I don't even know what she is. I can't even remember. Yeah, so, I keep all my costumes too. I have um, I have tons in my storage unit. But speaking of Halloween and it, um, a friend of mine knew how much I love Halloween and Zach love Halloween, and she knows that I'm not really celebrating it this year, right. um, because of his passing. So I received a box with some really cute Halloween plaques in them, and then I right. got this cute cup. I don't know if you guys can see it. But the bottom says, I like bad boys, right? On the, around the bottom. And then it has each, each, um, hang on, there we go. It has each um, Halloween character, right? Like they're posing nude. Right. right? I think it's the cutest thing. Yeah, so this is, is my new favorite cup. You know, you got Michael Myers. He's got a tattoo on his, or uh, scarf, um, leather oh. face. He's got a tattoo on his chest that says family. How funny is that? And yeah. they're in their they're in their bikini underwear with blood on them. <laughs> so I got a <laughs> Halloween tomorrow. Uh, I think not. Yeah. Gonna go out. I don't know. If, what's <laughs> what is, you know, we should have talked about this today, but too. But uh, what was your favorite? What's your favorite candy to get as a kid? Um. So what's I'm more. I'm corn because. Oh hell no! No, that's like the armpit of corn. You know, I mean, of candy, I, I, armpit of candy, candy corn is the armpit of candy. It's like Ohio. You just, who likes <laughs> candy corn is like Ohio. It's the armpit. Um, so I'm more of a fruity person than chocolate. So really? I like all. Yeah, I like Laffy Taffies. I like the fruity um, Tootsie Rolls. Uh, I like um, all that kind of fruity, chewy stuff. But yeah. then chocolate wise, when I was a kid, I liked Kit Kats. Those were like my number one. And then um, as I got older, I started to eat more of the other chocolates and stuff. But uh, I liked more fruity stuff. And well, here's a list: yeah. twenty-two worst Halloween candies of all time. You got wax lips, and I don't know Those what the fuck wax lips. Tastes like, like a candle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Almond Joy Mounds. I'm actually. I'm an Almond Joy fan. Uh, Musketeers. I, I like Musketeers once in a while. Yeah, I like Three Musketeers, too. Hard Grandma's Candy, you know, the ones that taste like uh, the orange ones. I don't know. They taste like what they Grandma taste. Grandma Candy, they taste like perfume and lint out of your grandma's purse. Sweet Tarts. I love Sweet Tarts. Bootleg Gummies. 
Yeah, no. <laughs> Six. Really? Fire- Fireball. I love Fireball. Not all yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I liked them. They were okay. Good so Tootsie Row, I know you mentioned it, but I'm a I big like Tootsie Tootsie Row fan. Me uh, too. Pixie Stick. I like Pixie Sticks. Yeah, I like Pixie Sticks. Uh, bazooka Gum, number 12. So I don't even know what why. Lemon Heads. What about Lemon Heads? This is number 11, Fun Dip. I love me some fucking Fun Dip. <laughs> I know, right? I like Fun Dip. What are the, and the Pop Rocks? Fun dip and pop rocks. Yeah, but yeah, cichlets. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Is uh, good and plenty. Hot tamales. I don't even. Uh, those are not my favorite. Non laffy taffies. And I love me some Mary Jane because they, you know, they taste like bit of honey and caramel. Mm-hmm. And stuff. Uh, double bubble. And eh, that's nothing wrong with Smarties. Anything mm-hmm. else that isn't candy. Uh, but those are some of their. And the number one is Necco Wafers. Necco Wafers has been disappointing children since James Polk. <laughs> since James Polk has been president. And I don't even know what that, what they look like. And they what, look like little pastel wafer candies. That's so funny. James Polk president. What number was he? Number three? Hold on. They're kind of chalky. They got a little chalkiness to them. Do they? Those Sislix ones. Sislix, Sislix. They look like little, they always reminded me of little um, miniature, uh, you know, okay, so you know what pool balls look like, right? They come in a little packet, and they look like little colored pool balls. I was like, oh, we got that pool ball candy. Yeah? Yeah. I'm trying to see when, third when Joe's book was uh, present. I, I don't know, I'm really kids, really I don't even know what that is. He was number 11. So over 170 years, this mm-hmm. Nako has been disappointing children. Bro, Did you my own. know that? I've had them on my thing. Really? Mm-mm. I like the, um, I, like, I, they, had, they had the Licka stick on there? No. So these Wait, are... The- number one is Nako wafers. I'm going to bring these on the screen. I've never... No. I think... Seen them, but I've never had them. Yeah, I've had them. They're no, yeah, they're cross. They're nasty. They're they're not like terrible, but they're not good. Really? I don't. Yeah, they're like dusty. Well, they've been. They've they're like 18. they're like okay. You know what they are? I don't know about you, but I always had a. Did you have like a like a pattern on how you ate the candy like you ate the first one you know you ate what you liked first and then you had like your last resort candy that's your last resort candy that's like after the smarties are gone Mm. you know like you ate the smarties i don't know did you eat your smarties last i can't even remember i don't even know what fucking smarties are you don't know what a smart somebody you don't know what a smarty is Mm -hmm. (laughs) somebody come get their cousin he don't know what a smarty is you know, they get the little, the, the little crinkle wrapper and it comes in a roll. I need you to pull that up. How do you not know what a Smarty is? Smarty. They turn into a little bit of dust when you bite them. They're kind of like a sweet tart, but not as pungent and smaller. I'm over here smacking my lips trying to describe to you what a Smarty is. All right, so I, can here, taste, I can taste it. So here's another list. This is the best candy handout and actually the worst. So. Let's see what they're not. Whoppers. Yes, Alexis. Whoppers. Whoppers, you know what? Mm. I I love Whoppers, right? But they sometimes Mm -hmm. if you could catch them, they make strawberry Whoppers. Man, I love them. Oh, those are so fire at Easter time. Is that what it is? Is it Easter Mm -hmm. time? Oh, Oh, hey. (laughs) Joe. So the 10. (laughs) My car warranty. Halloween candy, according to candystore.com, is. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, Skittles, M&M, mm-hmm. Starburst. So this is saying Hot Tamales is on there. Sour Patch Kids, Hershey Kisses, Snickers, Tootsie Pop, and Candy Corn. That's the top most popular. So I don't How know. does Candy Corn keep making it to all these fucking lists? Okay. So here's the worst. Here's the worst. Candy Corn. So they're on the popular end. Yeah. Same, same yeah. order. Circus Peanuts. I don't know what fucking circus peanuts is. <laughs> Smarties, Nako wafers, 
I think uh, Connie has said that before. Uh, wax Coke bottles. I actually, I was always a fan of those. So Mar that's what the wax lips taste like is the Coke bottle, but without the juice in it. Uh, Mary Jane. So I, I like some Mary Jane. It's hard to find. Tootsie Rose, which I'm a huge fan of Tootsie Rose. Good and, good and plenty. This has got to be my all-time worse than candy oh. corn. It's black licorice. Yes, I hate it. Vomit. My ex father in my ex father loved some black licorice. Oh, I so it's gross. It's like the worst toothpaste ever. I don't know what. Terrible. <laughs> Didn't we look up like the originate the yeah, yeah, was it, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how it originated? Roman days or some shit. Black yeah, because they. I, so, Connie, course, it's, Connie likes all this fucked up candy. Connie, I got to tell you, so uh, your Theo Manuel, he loves some black licorice. I don't know what, who, what, is this a Mexican thing? Uh, maybe I'm just not Mexican. She but, said she likes candy corn and black licorice. What I'll is see. going on over there, Connie? Who did this to you? Yeah. We, we need to write a lengthy letter. Who, who did this to you, girl? Yeah. <laughs> I, re I remember if we would go to a candy store, my ex father mm. would be like, hey, is there any black licorice in there? And I was like, oh, that's got to be the nastiest fucking candy ever. What? Yeah, they. Yeah. Let me give you some soap. <laughs> Chew on. I remember when we would go to um, Greenfield Village in Michigan and you would walk around like the candy, like they had like the little village, right? And they'd have the candy shop in there. And yeah. that was like a huge thing back back in the. The, the wild wild west days they they loved some black licorice they these people would try to give us samples of it and i'm a little kid and i'm like Fuck, stop trying to feed me this disgusting shit <laughs> the teacher would be like eat your candy i'm like this is not candy this is tire car this is oh, some gonna... shit off the car your mom likes black licorice because it tastes like aunt anise yeah mm-hmm Oh, grandma. Oh, and she says my grandma used to put the liquor in the little cups of espresso when they were kids. Oh, that's nice. So basically, never mind. So there it <laughs> that's is. That's my family. That's what Italians do, okay? We give our kids black licorice flavored liqueur in their espresso. <laughs> in an espresso. Uh, yuck. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that is, and that's where my mom's black licorice love for black licorice came from. <laughs> Bunch of drunk little Italians, drunk little Italians. There it is. Uh, so <laughs> you know, another topic that we can talk about because I know how tomorrow's Halloween. Google, uh, fright list the most popular costumes of 2021. What, uh, let's see who what the costumes are. <laughs> Uh, yes, Connie. You see Connie's comment. Oh, oh yes, that's nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, so the top uh, top ten is a, a witch, a, mm -hmm. a rabbit, dinosaur, Spider Man, Cro uh, Cro the 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 Disney character, Cruella, Cruella fairy, Harley Quinn, cowboy, clown, and Chucky. Here we go. Chucky. Chucky. I was um I I always resort to a witch. I love I love a witch a good witch costume. But I like go all out. I paint my skin green and I like get into character on all of my costumes. I like adapt to the I you know, I get the voice going, I practice <laughs> all of that. My yeah. mom says uh it's big grandma's fault. Yeah, so that's my we called my great grandma my great grandmother big grandma. Right. And um, she's blaming Big Grandma for her her uh, like of licorice and liquor now. So, <laughs> who puts first of all, who puts espresso in their children or who puts liquor in their children's espresso? Can we start there? I think and this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a rabbit costume though. Did you see a rabbit costume? Oh, bunny, like Playboy bunny. That's sexy. Mm-hmm. Wow. But not a 
My next rabbit. Rabbit. I've been seeing Chucky a lot. So a number, another game yeah. popular because of uh, Netflix is the Squid Games Halloween costume for adults. Um, uh, women. Have you watched any of that? I gotta watch it, no, but it's yeah. in. It's in. A, it's in a, is it? I think nurses. It's in Korean. Women's mm -hmm. Halloween costume: Maleficent. Uh, woman's praying mantis. Pineapple costume. Camp Kiss Camp Crystal from Jason Lake Co Counselor, Lady of the Sea costume, men's Halloween costume, Captain America. I think anybody that wears a Captain America or any of those tight things, I'm sorry, dude. If you if you're a fat guy, you shouldn't be rocking us. Um, no, that's the best. Uh, men's plus size Renaissance Knights costume. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those. Uh, Victorian vamp vampire costume. A Swedish fish costume. So if you're hmm. Swedish fish. Men's piñata. <laughs> That's funny. Women's uh, uh, push it uh, from salt and pepper. That's kind of cool. I never yeah, seen that. Yeah, that's cute. Uh, Billie Eilish costume. Hmm. Britney Spears. Uh, I want to show my tits costume. Oops, I did it again. Okay. Yeah, yeah like awesome. all the costumes. I've seen a lot of um, uh, Richard a lot Simmons. of women's Chuck Chucky ones. Richard Simmons. <laughs> yeah. Purple Rain costume. Inflatable Halloween costume is the Flamingo. Uh, sloth costume. Rubber Rubber Chucky inflatable. Rubber Chicken inflatable. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghostbusters are making another steam because they're making that movie. Yeah. So. Slime is a costume. Slimer. Uh, yeah, 80s inflatable phone costume. Those are some of the adult ones. I some of the I like those inflatable ones. Those are pretty cool. They have like the little motor on them. I saw in uh Zach's respiratory therapist used to come to the house in an inflatable costume and she'd always come in a um in a inflatable sumo wrestler costume and she'd like <laughs> come in the house, she could barely fit in the door. I thought it was the cutest thing. Um, I've seen a lot of um, I've seen a lot of like Chucky women like dressed like Chucky whores. I've seen a Chucky lot of that. Whores. Like, yeah, they got like little dresses. On. I feel like all women's costumes are now like they're just a reason to dress like a whore. Like it's kind of just role play for them, really. You know. Here's just, some of my here's some of my memories. I thought this was funny. I'm just sitting here right here, and he's got uh, – he looks like he's, he ate her pumpkin, Peter Peter. Oh, Peter Peter, and she's a pumpkin. That's funny. I wanted to see if there was any costumes for the kids. I have a ton of them on my memories. I did Little Dead Riding Hood instead of Little Red Riding Hood, and I had one side of my face was oh, normal. and the like Ric Flair. That would have been cool. Oh, that's funny. The other side of my face had a scratch going over my eye like a claw mark, like the wolf got me. And um, that eye was like changing and it was like uh, like a wolf eye. So when I turned, it looked like he had got me and I was changing into a wolf. That's awesome. I, but I wore a horror outfit with it, you know, of course, because you can't really be re Little Red Riding Hood and be wholesome. You got to be a Little Red, Little Dead Red Riding Hood whoa. So incorporated both. <laughs> 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 Nothing sells red riding like tits and ass, right? Yeah. <laughs> tits and yeah. ass. Tits and ass. All right, well, we'll move on to the show. Just trying to fill up some time. Uh, there was some, there was some great, there was probably some, a lot of great uh, costumes uh, probably going to mm -hmm. be. So. Yeah. Too bad we're not Taking doing this it. year off. I know, right? Yeah. I said next year maybe I'll have a party. Honey, where's Alex? Mm -hmm. Alex is uh he, right now the at the U of M game. He is uh I think half half back. You were right. <laughs> half back. He's the water boy. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's covering the the U of M game. No, um, he had some uh, 
he had a prior engagement. So, um, yeah. so no, Alex today, he will be, he'll be back tomorrow for all things wrestling. And mm-hmm. they probably have a slew a plethora, plethora. Of the things to talk about, you know? Yeah. We got all yep. kinds of wrestling shit to talk about. Lots wrestling. of exciting things coming up. If you guys, if you're a super fan of Alex Sports Mom, make sure you check him out tomorrow. All things wrestling with uh, my brother, him, uh, Sports Mouth, and uh, Mr. Tony Twister. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Mr. Tony Twister. Twister. I can see. I said, would you name yourself after uh, a typhoon? I don't know. I, I know you talk shit to him, didn't you? <laughs> You're funny. So, what is this? I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go back to my uh, stuff. I'm really we- digging my new cup. I can't wait to. I got it yesterday late, so I haven't messaged her yet. Oh, okay. Uh huh. So the, the Supreme Court refused. So we'll jump into politics. Um, okay, yay. Oh, man, she said she's a super fan. Oh, check them out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to do the show uh, topless. Oh. Uh, Supreme Court refuses to block main COVID vaccine mandate for healthcare workers. So uh, I guess they're stepping in and they said, no, they, the, the, the workers need to get vaccinated. Oh, that's got to be a huge fucking disappointment for some health workers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oopsie doopsie. So they were, they took it all the way to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court said, nope, you've got to get mandated or you got to have uh, vaccinated. I, get- I'm kind of torn on this because. Okay. Tell me. Um, so I'm torn because. Yes, I I understand that they should, you know, we, we all should have a choice, right? But. One, you're a healthcare worker. Two, I understand that there's people out here who, when everything popped off, they were on the front lines with no vaccination. They were wearing protective gear and endless hours of helping people and risking their lives, right? And they did it and and they pulled through. And without them, we wouldn't even made it this far. So hats off to all those people that, that, were on the front lines and weren't protected. The only thing they had protecting them was cloth, right? Right. But that's so where I'm torn is is I I get that it you feel you shouldn't lose your job because they depended on you during a time we all depended on you during a time that you weren't protected by a vaccine. But my other side of it is if you're a healthcare worker and you want to help people and this is your job, your profession, your passion, whatever you want to call it, why wouldn't you want to protect yourself, your family, and all the patients that you help by becoming vaccinated? So I'm I'm torn because I it's I, I feel bad for the ones that are saying, oh, I was good enough to save your life unprotected but now you're forcing me to do this and telling me I'm not going to have a job does that make did I say that properly yeah but then <clears throat> if you really care you know looking at it from a patient standpoint why wouldn't you want to this is your profession your passion this is you care for people and you take care of them and you protect them and you took an oath so I'm, I'm torn because I can't help but feel bad for them for what they've done for us and put their life on the line. But again, you're risking your life. Let's lessen that chance so you can continue to help people and you can continue to be on the front lines and you can continue to go home and sleep in your house with your family instead of like the videos I saw of people sleeping in their garages because they didn't want to pass you know, yeah. something to their family or they're take, staying in hotels or they're not going home. Oh yeah. Take all their clothes off outside. Right. So I'm really torn because I, I have, you know, friends, family, acquaintances, people that I know, you know, with uh, th- throughout Zach's journey that are healthcare professionals, frontline workers, 
uh, even down to the people that clean the hospital rooms. And I've spoke about this before. Their jobs are like, I put them at the top, right? Because they're the ones that have to go in there and really get down and dirty in some shit. You don't know what's lurking for them. I just don't understand why they wouldn't want to protect themselves knowing, seeing all of this, being in the middle of it, being in the thick of it, knowing what this could do to you and the high percentage compared to not, you know, and why wouldn't you, you've already risked your life. Why wouldn't you risk doing this if you think it's a risk or it's not, you know, I don't, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with it, that you've seen this first handedly watching people lose their lives, watching mothers lose their children, children losing their families and parents and dying alone. Why would you not want to do this and be on that, you know, the 80% chance rather than the 80,000% chance? Or the vice versa, the eighty thousand percent chance rather than the eighty percent chance of getting it. I don't understand that part. And but I, I understand that they're hurt with the threats of losing their job when they were thrown to the wolves per se without a vaccination. I, I just don't get why they wouldn't want to though. And maybe we can get a healthcare professional that wants to call in or you know, inbox me and Tell me your your train of thought with that because it I'm I'm torn. I don't understand. Yeah, I would like to get somebody from the that that is totally against it and somebody that is totally for it and it has got the rights. That would actually be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And I, I'm not trying to start an argument. I just want to no, hear. No, I want to understand. I want. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to hear your views and see what, mm -hmm. what you thought. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you guys want to take it off air and start boxing, that's up to you. Oh, no. We don't box anymore. We don't do that. My, <laughs> my nails are too long for all that. Well, not you, but I'm saying the guests. Oh, them. Oh, okay. Yeah, they can box. We, we, oh, sure. We'll promote for it and everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, me? No, I'm old. I'm not boxing. So, I'm boxing you shit. The Lincoln Project. <laughs> shit popped off. The Lincoln Project roasted as deranged hack for or orchestrating viral hoax to smear the young Ken. The disgrace of anti-Trump group, the Lincoln Project, is facing intense black lives orchestrating viral hoax involving tick torching holding individuals associating themselves with young Ken campaign. Twitter was uh, as a blaze after an image of group wearing white shirts, khakis, baseball caps, and sunglasses stood alongside the campaign bus of Virginia. Global National Candidate Glenn Young, Youngskin reporting vocal expressing support for Republicans, according to NBC. Uh, I don't know what happened in the story, but it looked weird. Um, I don't know, some racist shit going on. <laughs> and they showed up in white shirts and khakis? Yeah, I guess. That was the outfit they chose? Yeah, I guess. Were these white people? <laughs> these were white people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. White people. It's just like some motherfucking white racist ass people going to show up, try to beat your ass in some khakis. So. <laughs> I guess he was a uh, governor. Uh, these are approaching buses <laughs> full of khakis. We're all for Glenn. <laughs> They're in front of the campaign bus and is it Guadalajara? If this none screams, I'm going to beat your ass white privilege because my dad's a lawyer than khakis. I don't know what does. Twicker, Twitter, Twicker, Twitter, Twicker. Took, <laughs> Twitter took this motherfucking thing down. They can't, I can't see that. I will skip My dad's this. a lawyer and I wear khakis to the fight, right? Right. <laughs> and I'm going to come and I'm going to beat your ass with my white privilege. I'm going to beat fuck? your ass. Fucking white people, I swear. <laughs> uh, they all here giving everybody a bad name. Yeah, these white folks. What the hell? What you He's got baseball caps and khakis. Mm -hmm. What kind of gang outfit is that? I'm judging you by your choices. So Biden lied. This is on Fox Business. Uh, Biden lied multiple times as president. No. 
Jan Okado. Let me. I don't know what the hell is going the on. The president here. lied. No, president. <laughs> Sorry, it was a commercial. The fuck was that? She heard he lied and she was like, no! <laughs> to have much of any success, anything legislatively, since he's uh, began in office as president, the truth of the matter is, Uncle Joe, as they call him, I call him Uncle Fraud because he's made a number of allegations Uncle as to Uncle what Fraud. he was going to do in the campaign. He hasn't done it. He's lied multiple times as president. Uh, his press secretary continues to lie. His poll numbers are falling. He's uh, losing independents left and right, Democrats even as well. And we got a man in office right now who cannot govern or put together a coalition. The fact of the matter is progressives, as they said they would, credit as they said they would when he was running, they were going to push him as far to the left as they possibly could. And that's what we've been seeing. Thank God for Senator Joe Manchin and uh, Senator Sinema for holding the line on this. So I don't I don't know how much success he may actually get, but the way things are looking, it's not looking that 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 great for Joe Biden or the Democratic caucus. That's what I call him, Uncle Joe. <laughs> so that, was a, that, was black, that was a black man saying, This president lied to us. <laughs> what politician hasn't lied. Uh, right. Yeah, what politician? Tell me what politician has a line. Yeah, right. Let me see. I want to see this. That's funny. Yeah, what, what politician has a line? Tell yeah. me. Crickets. Crickets, because there isn't one. I don't, they, there isn't one. They all oh, lie. They all, about- you know, they all lie. And I feel like they can't make everybody happy. And there's things that they have to choose. Okay, which is. Which is the the lesser of evils in a situation? I feel like okay, tell a big lie, tell a little lie. That's how I always looked at politicians. Like they're gonna lie. Is it gonna be a big lie or a little lie? And who are they trying to? Whose back are they scratching? Or who's what? Li- what are they twisting for this? Because behind the scenes, this is happening, and they have to lie about that. I think that's just part of their their job, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, part of their job. Ooh, Connie said, I call him my baby daddy. Oh, shit. Daddy. <laughs> oh, that's a nice check, though, Connie. <laughs> there you go. Here's George Carlin. Politicians. Everybody complains about politicians. Everybody says they suck. Yeah. Well, where do people think these politicians come from? They don't fall out of the sky. They don't pass through a memory from another reality. They come from American parents and American families, American homes, American schools, American churches, American businesses, and American universities, and they're elected by American citizens. This is the best we can do, folks. This is <laughs> It's what our system produces. Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage out. If you have selfish, oh, ignorant, citizens, selfish ignorant citizens, you're going to get selfish ignorant leaders. The term limits ain't going to be any good. You're just going to wind up with a brand new bunch of selfish ignorant Americans. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's not the politicians who suck. Maybe something else sucks around here, like the public. Yeah, the public's a nice campaign slogan for somebody. The public sucks. Fuck hope. Fuck hope. Fuck hope. Because if it's really just the fault of these politicians, then where are all the other bright people of conscience? Where are all the bright, honest, intelligent Americans ready to step in and save the nation and lead the way? We don't have people like that in this country. Everybody's at the mall, scratching his ass, picking his nose, taking his credit card out of his fanny pack and buying a pair of sneakers with lights in them. A little political dilemma for myself in a very simple way. On election day, I stay home. I don't vote. Fuck them. Fuck them. I don't vote. Two reasons. Two reasons I don't vote. First of all, it's meaningless. This country was bought and sold and paid for a long time ago. The shit they shuffle around every four years (laughs) doesn't mean a fucking thing. And secondly, I don't vote because I believe if you vote, you have no right to complain. People like to turn around, I know. They say, they say, well, if you don't vote, you have no right to complain. But where's the logic in that? If you vote 
and you elect dishonest, incompetent people, and they get into office and screw everything up, well, you are responsible for what they have done. You caused the problem. You voted them in. You have no right to complain. I, on the other hand, <laughs> who did not vote, who, in fact, did not even leave the House on Election Day, I'm in no way responsible for what these people have done and have every right to complain as loud as I want about the mess you created that I had nothing to do with. So I know that a little later on this year you're going to have another one of those really swell presidential elections that you like so much. You'll enjoy yourselves. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm sure as soon as the election is over, your country will improve immediately. As for me, I'll be home on oh that my day. God. Actually, the same thing as you. The only difference is when I get finished masturbating, I'm going to have a little something to show for it, folks. <laughs> There you go. Politicians. That, that would be a great slogan, right? Fuck hope, fuck the public. <laughs> I wonder how, much, how many people would elect you. Oh, right? I missed that. Sorry, I was frozen. That would be a great platform. Fuck, fuck the public. You know what yeah. I mean? Fuck hope. How many people? You know what? You probably would get some wackos that would support you, right? For sure. They, yeah. Listen, they voted for Kanye. Yeah. 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 Fuck hope. Yeah. 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 They voted for Kanye. They're de they voted for Trump. They're definitely going to support fuck hope. Fuck hope. Bring neg negativity back. Fucking kill everybody. Right. Oh, my God. It's like, no. it's, like the, it's like the white teenager running down the street with the AK-47. The cops oh. just wave, wave to him. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? I'm just killing. I'm just killing black folks. It's okay. You know, right, it's okay. We're just gonna arrest them. We're not gonna shoot them. We're gonna just arrest them and give them a sandwich first. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm Your passion. Forget your passion. So, shit. I've seen some shit. Okay. Mother Nature is 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 just being very upset. Forecasts predict the biggest tidal flood in events in the past two decades. Um, Mother mm. Nature is just not, you know what I mean? She's unhappy. Uh, mm. This world, you know, pollution. Uh, We're losing of, her. They were saying something because of the tankers are just chilling on the on the water to trying to get people to unload these. That the they're 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 causing massive pollution because they got you know hundreds of boats out in the in the Bay Area and that's not normal. So mm -hmm. nature is not happy. Tidal waves. What is going on? Some Bible fucking end of the world shit going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what what was the um, you know you 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 try to backtrack? Okay, so why are all these boats out there? What was the cause? COVID was the cause of that, right? So, and then there was no, I don't know. It just, you, you start looking at who caused this, what caused that, who didn't do this right, who didn't do that right. I have my fingers pointed at a few people. Uh, I, I, we talked about it, but, you know, we went furniture shopping just to take a look. And they were like, uh, this shit won't be in until March. I was like, where the fuck, what do you mean March? It's fucking November. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's sitting, it's sitting some, in a warehouse somewhere. And I'm like, what? And then you said, that uh michelle's daughter six months like i had this. to go yeah she asked me uh, a couple weeks ago if i would go pick up a couch with her so i'm like yeah and and we get there and the guy comes out and he brings the couch out right and you know under the couch out it has that like that like soft like liner right that's like stapled to the bottom to cover up all the hardware and all the you know yeah. the, how it's all been put together so he flips it on its side. It's wrapped. He flips it on its side. There is a cut in the bottom. I kid you not, almost as long as my leg. It It's sliced. And I said, uh, did, sweetie, did you see this? Right? I pointed out to her. I'm like, um, the bottom of your couch is sliced. And she's like, what? And she looks. And he had already walked off, right? He's like, let me go get this paperwork. I'll come back. He damn well saw that slice and he tried to ignore it because I seen his eye catch it. Like, let me turn it away from her. But when he turned it away from her, he turned it towards me. And, you know, my uh, fucking Karen ass, I'm going to say something. Right. So I'm like, uh, it, mm -mm, this is not mm -mm, this is not right. So she goes, what are you kidding me? So he comes back and uh, 
she said, do you know how long I've been waiting for this couch? He said, yeah, I know, like six, seven months. Six, seven months. It's half a year she's been waiting for the second. It was like a sectional, the second piece of her couch. So this entire time she's had one half of the couch and he, she goes to pick up the other and now it's damaged. And he goes, um, we don't know when we're going to get this back in. It's probably going to be like March or April. So he, he let her take the couch that had a sliced bottom and put in for another one. But she's not going to get that other one for another six months. And then they'll just come and swap it out. But it's like, well, six months. So it took you a whole year just to get the full couch put together. By that point, you know, it's, and, and of course, and I'm not going to say this to her to send her into a panic, but you know, my ass, we always, I, I go, I just keep thinking of the this and the that, right? So, and that. so, right. So now you got one couch that you've had for six months, you get the other couch brought in that's fucked up. It's damaged, but that one couch is still now six months old. The other piece, the new undamaged piece is going to be another six months. So when you put them together, is one cushion going to be down more and the other one's going to be nice and fluffed up because they meet together. So here we are paying, paying all this money for a couch. That's half of it's going to be already weathered. It's got booty creases in it and all that. So here, here's, okay. here's my, not happening my, with me. I want a whole ass new couch. Here's my perspective. I know we import a lot of good, but this would this to be honest with you, this makes me think: Why isn't this stuff made in America anymore? And I know mm -hmm. or cheap labor, mm -hmm. cheap labor and stuff. But I think this this should be a wake up call. And I know they're saying it's not Biden's fault that this stuff is sitting on the ports. Mm -mm. This should be a wake up call for the president. We need to get things that are made here again. I got to be honest with you, right? Made in America. Uh, couches. There's a whole trickle down effect to that, though. Made in America, uh, because th these manufacturers, uh, you know, these people who are selling it, they want t the top dollar for what they're selling, and so they're they resort to outsourcing because they need more money. Some of that stuff needs to come back, and we wouldn't be oh, in this. Absolutely. If if we're a country that's self sufficient. We're supposed to be the number one country. No, we're the number one country in the world. Why aren't we the number one self-sufficient country as well? Because we're lazy and greedy. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to not just goods, not just goods, but oil. Look at services. Look at all the services. We're talking about oil. So mm -hmm. oil, hit, oil hit a record high. We're paying $4 at the pump. This stuff shouldn't happen. Uh, we, we, we have oil wells here. Why are we getting oil wells from, you know what I mean? Oil from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are we still on fossil fuel? This is to me. Greed. We just need, you know, and, and I know I don't want to go down the political rabbit hole, but Biden, I know I'm not a huge supporter. He has some good ideas. The whole green leaf thing. You know what? His own people are not backing him. They're turning no. down. The whole, you know why? Because it's taking money from big oil, all that. They don't want that. They don't want. Mm -hmm. They don't want a, a a system or a country that is running off of uh, renewable energy and right making goods because that doesn't make money for them. You know what Great. I mean? Great. So greedy, you, greedy. You have the House. You have the Senate that are Democrats and they can't even, they were saying, Oh, you know, you got the, the house that's Republican and the, 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 the Senate is Republican and the Democrat and they're not talking and they can't agree. Now both of the houses are fucking Democrat. Your president is Democrat and you can't agree on certain things. It blows my mind. So to me, what George Carlin said, it makes plenty of sense. Why mm -hmm. fucking fall for these fucks anymore? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We talked about it last week. Other countries have eight parties. Maybe we need to start our own party so we can push some of these old white fucks out of Washington. I'm just being honest. So there wow. you go. Drake There's for my... president. Drake for president. There you go. So <laughs> let's start. Uh, let's start a party. I think you'd be great at that. No, I'm serious. They so said they just need to. Uh, get... You got my vote. Shit, you just hyped me up. I'm ready for this. We need to get rid of these old politicians that stay in Congress and Senate for fucking years, and they're years. ninety years old, mm -hmm. and they're 
you know, I worked in Washington, right? And I was a, and I worked for a senator. They spend stupid amount of money for nothing, for mm-hmm. nothing. Let me tell you this. They take a limo from one building that is walking distance to another building. Where does that money come from? You and me. It mm. doesn't make sense. Mm. Preach. So there mm, you go. Mm, mm, mm. So uh, Derek Chivin's jury, jury finally speaks out. First time recalling traumatic experience. I would have hate to be a, a, a one of the jurors on his. <laughs> oh. They finally spoke up. Yeah. Uh, Did they see, have any quotes in regards to what they said, or just talking about the tra- how traumatic it was? Trying to play the video, but there's a you know, of course, got to get that commercial in there. Commercial. I brought up to the fact that. This is not what he did, but more or less what he didn't do. He did not provide life-saving measures for George Floyd when he knew that the guy was in pain or needed medical attention. Mm -hmm. Even the um, firefighter that was off said, check his pulse, check his pulse. Well, then Mm -hmm. they checked his pulse and they said, well, do you want to do anything? No, we're leaving him here. (gasps) He had ample to roll him over. And start CPR, and he didn't. He mm-hmm. didn't move one bit. And even when the EMS came up and checked him, he never even got up. And he knew he had been lifeless for 30 seconds to a minute. Mm-hmm. He still never stepped up and let the EMS come in and do their job. Mm-hmm. He had to have the EMS tap him to get up. Mm-hmm. That, to me, said more than what he actually did, that he mm-hmm. just didn't do anything to help him. At that time. Why do you think that was a light bulb? Well, when we were in deliberations and, and Jody did bring that up and we did look through everything very, very carefully, what I thought about is something that was said during the trial and that is Minneapolis Police Department has a model. And if I'm understanding it correctly, their model is in our custody, in our care. George Floyd was in their custody. He was never in their care. Mm. And that for me just it just hit hard. I don't feel like they ever cared for him. There was a point where um, the prosecutors pointed out when the life left his body on that video. What was that moment like? Ooh, I had a big gasp. I just, I've never experienced anything like that before. I don't think any of us have. Um, it was very, very traumatic and it just, just hurt. Just hurt my whole soul, my whole body. And I felt pain for his family. Um, it was very, it was very hard. The whole experience has been hard. That, that you know, that's got to be you know pretty hard to watch. Ooh, his life, it's hard to listen to. His life taken, and I don't know if you've ever had that. Uh, I don't know, um, and I don't mean to to go here, but uh, there was a, there was an accident on Michigan Avenue in Livernois, which was moments from my parents' house. So there was a van <clears throat> that was, I believe, going northbound on liver noise. And we're talking about a rapey van, you know, the rapey van. The mm-hmm. No window rapey van, yeah. 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 And um, they had the right-of-way. There was, a De- if you remember a Honda Del Sol, they made a little two-seater, little, mm-hmm. little boxy car. Mm-hmm. They were on westbound on Michigan. Well, we were at the light. It was me. I believe it was Alex and a couple of my cousins, Jesse and Vince. And the Del Sol ran the red light. Uh, and this is the first time I've ever experienced this. Uh, I was pretty sad at that moment. But so anyways, the Del Sol ran into the van. The Del Sol had no, no chance because we're talking – fiberglass 80s van mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The van spilled out we ran over to the guy in the del so the engine was sitting on his chest we went, to, we went to try to get him out you heard him gasp for air and he was gone well that was i've never experienced that where you that last second of someone's life the last, their life when their life exits their body yeah, the fire department shows up and they got the the jaws of life and I, and we told him hey he's gone and they went over there like yeah he's gone so they had to cut him open 
So we ran over to where the guy, where the van was, because the van was tipped over, and the guy was laying in the middle of the street. He didn't oh speak Spanish. He didn't speak English. It was glass over him, and he was trying to move. And I kept telling him in Spanish, "Don't move, don't." You know, he probably could have had a lot of broken bones. Yeah, telling me like he was in anguish, and I said, "Don't move, don't move," because he was. He didn't have a seatbelt because he went through the, the front. windshield. But he survived, but he was still alive. But that was probably the – that I can say that I've never been in that, that experience where you see somebody take their last gasp. But when you have, like, him sitting on his neck and the juror watches as he takes his, his last gasp. It's on video. There shouldn't be that. That that shouldn't take an hour. That dude, you're guilty. And you're guilty. Yeah, and I think uh, for him to try to fight it and this and that, I think as an honorable, he said, "You know what? I fucked up, and I killed a man, and mm -hmm. he wasn't in my care. He was definitely in my custody, and I didn't care about the man. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, think I I caused his death, and I and I." You know, you, you, all of that. I killed him. My no, actions, no, my no. lack of actions didn't save him. And I took an oath to do this as a police officer that right. you take an oath, right, to, to protect regardless of what's going on with the person. And uh, he wasn't, he had his knee in his neck. Like, there's, there's no question about that. And it, thank God for video because... Um, that would have, you know, it would have never been told. But uh, here's the thing. I don't understand why he was trying to fight it, get a different jury. But, you know, blah, blah, blah. Dude, you fucked up. He's a piece up. of shit because he's a piece of shit. You fucked up. He's fighting you know? because he's a piece of shit. His entire career and life has been <laughs> he's in charge and he's entitled and he he's this is what was supposed to happen. And it's that power. He wasn't even in upset when he, he like he was just shot. No. Oh, my God. Guilty. Well, right. Oh, no, no tears. Of course. Fuck he, face. Well, because he lives in this in this reality, you know, in this in this make believe world that he's in charge of everything and, and he'll he'll get out of this too, just like all the other things. He there was other things that led to this to George Fuller dying. This was just you know, unfortunately the, the topper that finally outed him and showed who he was as a person. So him fighting this and, and going against it doesn't surprise me because this was not just an accident. This is who he is. So he's going to continue to fight because this is the way he lived his entire life and his entire career. Now, if it really was an accident and he was found guilty and he, he knew he was guilty, he, he wouldn't be fighting it like he is because he would have just accepted it for what it was and for he fucked up and as a man and the honorable thing to do. But when you go up through your entire life and career with this fucking privilege and this chip on your shoulder and this, I'm the fucking, I'm in charge. I'm the law attitude. You're going to continue to fight because in his head, that's who he is. His character. He still thinks he's the fucking law until somebody fucking bends him over in prison and shows him who who's really, he's just a bitch. Right. So, and, yeah, and, uh, and I'm sure, you know, uh, sorry to cut you off. There was, you know, I would, I think it was Dominic I was talking to in regards to that. There, there could very well be some, you know, some corrections officers and people in prison that are going to protect him and think he did okay and coddle him, but don't let him get out in that population. Lights out, motherfucker. Lights out. Lights out. So, you know, you know, like I said, I gave you, I gave you that uh, story. It was, uh, Experience that I've never told that story. And if, I wish Alex was on today, yeah, uh, because I, I that was that was pretty, it was it's pretty crazy. Traumatic. Yeah, the, the weeks trying to get somebody out, and they were yeah. like, and they were like, and you, and it was it. That was it. And I was yeah, like, their, right. soul, their soul exited yeah. their their human body. Yeah, to 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 witness that as a juror, and I would have hate to be on, uh, on that juror to watch that. And I hate to go down this rabbit hole, but I think, to be honest with you, if I was in office or if I was if I, if I was in any kind of um, executive position, I'm like an eye for an eye. You know, mm -hmm. there's Me any, too. 
It wouldn't be so no question. Guess what, dude? Uh, we, we're going to do a public hanging for you. And, <laughs> yeah. And you're going to shit. Gonna get you all ready. Yeah, you're going to get the, you're going to shit and piss on yourself because uh, you deserve to die just the way you did. You did that. to mm -hmm. someone. So get the rope. Get, go get the rope. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a good, we're going to have a hanging. I'm going to let you pick your rope. Which one you like? You want a pretty <laughs> color? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We can get you a real nice full meal so you shit real well. <laughs> yeah, they're uh yeah, I especially as a juror to see that. Because you know, you have this normal people, they feel that pain, they feel that heaviness on top of the fact now they have another man's life in their hands because of his possible actions. So this is a, this is serious, right? But when you see that as a juror, I, I can't you can't deny that. There, there that's it. There's no question about it. Like she said, light bulb moment. At that moment, he was in their care but was not being cared for. So at that point, eye for an eye, you I, I feel bad for them. I know I know they're having nightmares. You could hear it in her voice. Uh, my favorite scene, but here you go. Good old hanging. Oh boy. I knew you were gonna pull one up. <laughs> but yeah, if they had a public hanging, a lot of this stuff wouldn't happen, right? Mm -mm. It sure wouldn't. It sure wouldn't. Nope. All right. So there we just talked about 100 ships idled off uh, California shore communities saying they see the rise of toxic pollution. So you can look out in the water directions without seeing ships is a different size from over the world, uh, said John, a longtime resident of Long Beach, California. It's like watching an invasion before it starts. Uh, only new, not warships. They are attacking but it is tankers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of crazy, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a definitely a trickle down effect from choices that have been made prior to Biden's. I can start by removing a yeah, commercial and adding them back and in one at a time to... until I find These the cool. commercials. Love us today, don't they? No, but I don't like I don't like this uh, on NBC News. It doesn't allow you to mute the commercials. Really? Yeah, for whatever reason. But yeah, there's so I wanted to play the video, but um, these are what the picture looks like. Uh, it looks just a bunch of tankers and, uh, and just Long Long Beach is a big big port in uh, L.A. So, mm -hmm. but painters, he says the guy says he lives in Long Beach and it looks like an attack, but it's instead of warships, it's fucking tankers. That's crazy, isn't it? Wow. Wow. That's all that's all your shit you waiting for. That's all my shit. I know my candles are on there for my on my website. I got a bunch of shit out there. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's swim out. Let's let's take a trip. Let's come on. Yeah. Let me go I'll find that shit. I'm no, a mom. No, I'll find my shit. This is I be pulling up with a speedboat. It'd be like, hey, uh, I know you in uh, container twelve. That's my shit. So why don't we just all load it? Yeah, I'm gonna need you to mm -hmm, I'm gonna need uh, you to come with it. Come with it. Come with it, please. Yeah, so we watched yeah, this. Need you come up off that. So Zuckerberg and Facebook have been there. It's a political frenzy right now because of all the the uh, whistleblowers, all the, all the craziness. So Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, the owner now or CEO, Zuckerberg, is now the CEO of the mother uh, conglomerate called Meta. Uh, that's going to be called the metaverse. Uh, mm -hmm. Metaverse is going to be basically the uh, family tree of Facebook, which now they did change officially, change their name to the Blue App, uh, and uh, so that you'll see that. And they own Instagram, WhatsApp, and all those other platforms. And here I let and we watched the video the other day. And, and Meta is the umbrella company, yes. correct? Well, yep. Um, Meta is the umbrella. Here he goes. He From it. Facebook to Meta. Uh, not a total shock. There had been some rumors, some speculation for the last couple of weeks that this was going to happen. But it is sort of a significant signal of the way that the company sees the Facebook brand. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. It's been confusing for some years where Facebook <laughs> means both that blue app and also the company that owns Instagram and WhatsApp and a few other divisions. So part of what they're doing here is trying to make it a little more clear to people that Facebook is this app. There's also Instagram. There are other divisions within this company and they're creating this new parent company called Meta. But the timing here isn't lost on everyone that yeah. Facebook as a company, now Meta has been under scrutiny for weeks from the media and lawmakers over a variety of practices uh, that they have within the company. And you have to wonder, Dave, and I wonder what your reporting shows here, is this part of that sort of difficult brand, uh, frankly, you can call it a public relations crisis that Facebook has been having here, right? Make Facebook the name itself, just the blue app, as you describe it, and then use Meta to describe the whole family, the whole company, if you will. I think that's certainly a side benefit if it's not exactly the, the main the main reason they're doing this. They, you know, Mark Zuckerberg can now say he is the CEO of Meta, and people, uh, you know, people who consider the name Facebook to be a really toxic idea, the whole delete mm. Facebook movement, if you want to call it mm -hmm. that, you know, that uh, people are, are going to take it's going to take a while for people to realize what Meta is and uh, for there to be any kind of delete meta movement. So uh, there's certainly, the name change is going to help Zuckerberg sort of maybe redo his image a little bit. It also signals that Facebook is going to, well, now meta is going to spend a lot more time and energy on this new product line, essentially, of where they want to go, which is virtual reality. So Mark Zuckerberg today spent a lot of time about uh, the idea that, that we're all going to spend time in what he calls the metaverse, which is really another word for virtual reality, augmented reality. This idea has been around forever, uh, for mm -hmm. decades in science fiction and films and books. Just the idea that we're all going to spend a lot more time um, either working out or, or attending concerts or uh, in kind of a second life, if you will. Uh, that's actually another uh, rival company. Um, we're all going to spend more time in virtual reality, uh, living our lives there rather than necessarily um, in the real world. It's clear that that's where Zuckerberg wants. There you go, Tori. The metaverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. The real world. The real world. So, you know, um, I'm a huge fan of, um, I just went blank. The fake world? You're a huge fan of the fake world? I'm a huge fan of the Matrix movie. And oh, yeah. I got to I gotta be honest with you. I think we are headed in that direction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, metaverse, alter, um, alter reality. Not the reality, um, and because uh, people want to live a life that they can't live in reality, right? Because it's not a perfect world when you got to get up in the morning and go to work, and you got to pay bills and stuff like that. And social media allows you to be this uh, super duper human, and everything, all oh, life is perfect. And uh, I think we're headed in that in that way. Um, not maybe not in our kids' lifetime but maybe in their kid's lifetime. So there it is. Yeah. The, meta the metaverse. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So. <laughs> it sounds scary. So Madonna's under fire recreating Man uh, Marilyn Monroe's death. For That's a bitch. I, I, Tacky. What is going on with her? I just think that she is going through... I think I feel like she's going through another midlife crisis, maybe. Yeah. You know, let me say this. I love her in the sense she's talented, right? Her music was great. She was an icon. She, I can't even look at that. That's so fucking tacky. God. That's the original, that's the original scene here. Mm -hmm. she, um, why, would, why would she do this? Because she wants attention. She fell off. And she wants attention. So There's whatever. That's, yeah, uh, that, that was the original scene, right? Uh, no, that's Madonna. Oh, is that? I can't see. Oh, yeah. We're having an ass like that, but okay. Mm -hmm. She wants to show her ass by being an ass. I just don't. You know, she's always been one to rock the boat, stir the pot, shock the waves, right? That's that is some, some major makeup because she doesn't look like that. No, she doesn't look like that. She looks like a Kardashian. 
Listen, makeup is is witchcraft. You ever Does, see some hoes without makeup that don't look nothing like they look with makeup on? You're like, bitch, put your makeup back on. You're scary. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, I used to wear tons of makeup and do all that. And I could, still could. And there's days where I like, you know, if I'm going to go out and do something extravagant, I put on all that makeup. And kudos to you. If you if you layer it on, bake it on, beat your face to the gods, all of that. It's a, it's a talent like no other, right? But if I see you and I'm like, who the fuck is that bitch? And we friends and not on Facebook and I don't even know who you are in person where you don't got no makeup on or you post a picture of you with no makeup on and you don't look nothing like that person. You go missing and people don't know what you real you looks like. I need you to reevaluate your your life on how you're presenting yourself, because some of these girls, you see them and you're like, no fucking way. That's the same person. This bitch looks like she has a vitamin A and K deficiency. Her eyes are all blackened in. They put that makeup on, boy. Mm, whole new everything. And it's Halloween every day. Every day. So yeah, makeup is witchcraft. It's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful skill. But that's how people be out here getting catfished. Did you um did you ever see the article about the um Asian man that? married uh, a woman i'm gonna i'm gonna bring this on because you were just saying this is halloween i I want definitely i know i've seen this video before but here you go Mm -hmm. Yeah, but right here, this is a perfect one. She got no teeth. No teeth, no lashes. Oh. She literally looked like a trailer crack whore. She was so trailer parkish before that. Now look. Catfished. That's not crazy, though. Like, that looks like a whole different person. That is a whole different person. It is. She just added on hair, lashes, nails, teeth, new skin, eyebrows, different eye color, skin pigmentation. What you mean? You you a whole ass new person. And that's scary though. Man, yeah. Imagine going to sleep with that and you wake up and you're like, what the, the fuck? fuck yeah. happened here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I say I at least I look sort of similar to who I am with makeup on and who I'm not. I don't know. I take my lashes off and I'm like, damn, I'm Kermit now. What happened? <laughs> but other than that, um, mm-mm. I mean, these are all things that you know enhance and they're nice. But like I was saying about the 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 story about the Asian man who married a woman and. He had kids with her, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the kids, and all kids are beautiful, right? Most of them. I don't know. Fuck them kids. But anyway, so the kids come out ugly as shit, right? Mm-hmm. Ugly. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? And, you know, in that culture, it's the way you look is held to a very high standard and it's considered pristine and you've got more money. If you look a certain way and if your skin is the most palest white there could be means that you're, you know, you're wealthy. And so these kids come out hideous and he's pissed, right? So he starts researching his wife had all this plastic surgery. She was, mm, Looks nothing like what she used to. She was really, she was ugly. She was an ugly woman and um, to their society. And his kids came out looking just like her because her genes were very strong. And he divorced her. Mm. Because he had ugly children. But uh, like these kids were, they weren't cute, you know, but poor kids. But she, yeah. That's crazy. This happened to me. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh-oh, what you pull up? <laughs> hmm? 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> this, this has happened to me. Yeah, what the hell? Oh my god. Let's go out of here. wake up and you're like what the fuck but that then... reminds me there was an episode of fresh prince of bel-air and did you ever see the episode where he gets locked in the base or he gets locked in the i think it's the basement of the room and they it was like I, don't quote me i think it was like prom night and she was all done up right and so they're down in the basement nobody knows they're trapped in this room and they're together and by the end of the episode they're at each other's throats right they're at their wits end and and she starts taking off her stuff and she's like oh these contacts he's like well, those aren't your real eyes she's like no and the hair she's like this too he's like i thought this was real she so she starts snapping off her nails <laughs> She's like, here, you can have those too. And she's snapping off all the fake stuff she has on her. And Will Smith is like, do I, who the fuck are you? Right? He's freaking out because she's totally not even the same fucking person. <laughs> and every time I see something like that, I'm like, yep, that's when I take my shit off. I'm like, look at here I am. <laughs> it's a whole new me. But right. yeah, I don't know. That's some, it's some witchcraft shit. I mean, girls that's out here. You, I, I, you know, like you go missing, you better have a picture of what you look like without your stuff on. So they know what to put on the milk carton mm. out here looking for a different bitch. <laughs> you ain't going to mm. get found girl. That's crazy though to me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know though. I'm not up here posting my shit looking crazy on, on social media. Uh, everybody wants to put their best face forward. Right. But Sometimes between that, between all the stuff that they put on and the filter, you don't know who you're getting. You're hmm. like, but I'm going to need you to go home and get your filters. You forgot your filters, baby girl. You forgot your filters. <laughs> is not what you looked like when you sent me this photo. A lot of times now I have, I have guy friends who will make the girl FaceTime him first he'd be like let's facetime she's like ah, i'm busy i just want to say hi but they really are doing it because they want to see what you look like without your filters without all that craziness going on and they want to see you real life um you know they want to they want to see it all blemishes the stretch marks the juiciness not not all this buffed out iphone filter shit here's uh dom i know he said this was one of his movies and one of my favorite movies as well uh, the scene that you might describe that builds Will Smith, but here you go. I'm gonna get you, sucker. Aren't you really yeah. good? <sighs> yeah. You know what else? Another secret. This is nice in the summer. <laughs> oh my god! I am glad to get these off. No, not that. Not the tits, please don't. Not the tits. In the right color. <laughs> this voluptuous ass of mine. <laughs> Guys, always get a kick out of this one, right? Oh, God, I feel so much better. I know you did, too. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she I pops see, her leg off. I see some shit like that. What the totally fuck? some shit. What do you do? Uh, to bitch take your uh, leg off. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, Ice Cube's missing out on 9 million people <laughs> not getting vaccinated. I know, uh, you know, I know, I, I know he was a non vaccinator, but I think he was a big Trump supporter. But, uh, Ice Cube is saying that, uh, 
nine million dollar pay payday because he's not saying yes to getting vaccinated. Another guy that is a huge icon. Why ain't you getting vaccinated, Jay Money? I didn't know that about him. Shame I on you! I'm not going to that concert in December. Yeah, there he has a concert here in December. I'm not. I'm not going to support that. Yeah, so uh, I know we talked about this. Kim Kardashian, Travis Barker never had an affair, despite Shannon Oakler's claim. So I guess uh, she's saying they're it's a saying lie. lie. But I still it's think uh, I think uh, Kim still threw that ass at him. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. I think they're lying. I think she did fuck him. I don't. Uh, so Shannon Mokler, Mokler, am I saying it right? <laughs> Mokler, she claims that Kim during, I think it was 2006, fucked Travis Barker. They had an affair and that she's the reason her family, him, you know, her kids with him is broken. My memory serves me a little more correctly than that because I remember her being a whole ass drunken mess. I remember her being in the news. I remember her not being a good mother. So I don't believe the fact that that Kim broke their marriage up. I do believe that Kim did throw that ass back at him. They were neighbors. They knew each other. They hung out. They met from Paris Hilton, which is how Courtney and him met. But, you know, everybody was getting a piece of Kim during that time. Kim was, yeah, yeah she was, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, everybody was tapping that ass. She was making videos. She was trying to get her name out there. She was hanging out with Paris, who was wild at the time, right? Who's now fallen back, Paris and Nicole Richie. And they were, they were like the thing. They were on the scene. So Kim was riding coattails and she had to bust it open to do that. I do believe that that she, you know, they fucked around. Maybe, maybe she just gave him a little blow job. I don't know. Something maybe, maybe just what, what was your term? Finger bang. That's your, that's your term, right? Maybe he did that. I don't believe that their marriage broke up because of her. I think that Shanna is in denial and to even support those claims, her children who spend the majority of their time who are, who are adults or, you know, older um, with Travis Say, you were never a good mom. You were never there. You were not supportive. And you were an alcoholic. Stop blaming people for your shit. And she's still not a good mom. She's still absent. The one kid said she didn't talk to her mom in like, I don't know, like eight months. Something crazy. Hmm. So I think Shana's just looking for someone to blame because she couldn't feel, you know, step up to the plate. And she's just a, I think she's just a whole fucking hot mess. For, that's who she is and so now she's just trying to be irrelevant and say that her kids my kids aren't talking to me because of this you know narcissists want to blame everybody else for their fucked up behavior so it's no surprise to me that this is one more finger point she's going to do because she ain't when does she ever take the accountability for her actions and the how, decades that we've seen them in the you know well, I know I this question and uh, from my experience so can you, can you, I think you said no. So if someone, you know, fucked around with your sister, uh, cousin, aunt or whatever, can, mm -hmm. you, can you, the next person, uh, could you be with that person? No, I couldn't. You said no. I, I have, I actually experienced where I actually slept with sisters. Uh, I don't know how serious they took me, uh, but I know I slept with somebody that my brother slept with and I couldn't, couldn't be, I'm like, eh. And I'm that was awkward, right? I couldn't keep banging her. Yeah, I keep banging yeah, her. Yeah, right. No. But nothing serious, right? Oh, so you continued to have sex with her? Uh, it, it was really quick, a couple times, and it was over. But but for this, for the Kardashians, like you said, I don't think they give a fuck. But even if if Chloe know the Chloe, but um, Courtney knows that uh, maybe Travis maybe fucked her, or even knows that it did happen. Well, they're, you're like, eh, who cares? Maybe she doesn't know the depth. Maybe they they both kind of just blew it off as we must we we must around what nothing really happened happened, and could very well been the truth. You know, happened right? They maybe they kissed. They probably kissed, flirty. You know, people have the flirt flirt 
flirtatious relationship. There's just a bunch of flirting. There's nothing that really goes past. Maybe you jacked off to her or something. I don't know. But um, kind yeah, of thing. I messed with multiple sisters, and I don't think it was ever serious on that second sister, you know, the after. <laughs> After see, I and but that for me, I don't know. I got boundaries. I'm not fucking with you if you fucked with my sister or my cousin or my aunt. Like I why? There's a whole ass sea full of motherfuckers out there with golden dicks walking around. Like, why would I have to I don't you need to I do that? A challenge for me back in the days. I wanted to see if I can go through the whole crew. Yeah, well, that then that's <laughs> sounds about right. Sounds about right. Well, that's nice. Nice. Gotta go to the crew, you know. I'll right? Get you that shirt. I fuck the crew. Oh, right? Because I seen the, I seen a meme guys. Where... That's a thing with guys, right? They want to fuck the crew, the whole, the whole posse of chicks. Like I, seen, whole I, seen, little... I seen a, I seen a meme. A girl said something along the lines, um, "You know, my boyfriend introduced me, introduced me to a couple of his buddies. What the fuck mm -hmm. was I thinking?" Uh, I, for right? Listen, there's been many times where I'm like, mother fuck, you're the ugly one? Damn. You're the like, one. fuck. Right? And I'm not going to say I ain't fucked the crew before. I'd, I'd be lying. But I'm not I'm not fucking with somebody that's fucked my sister or and I think I might have told you um I've told the story before there was a guy, you know, uh I went on dating site, right? I don't do dating sites. It's just never been a thing for me. And my friends talked me into it. Go on there, just do it. I'm like, I don't know, right? I'm yeah. Mm, yeah, dating sites are I have that's a whole nother outlook on dating sites. I have a I have a I have a theory about that. So date I go on this dating site, right? It's the the fish one, the plenty of fish. Mm. I, I I'm, I'm on there and uh, I meet a guy you know, after sifting through the cesspool and um, he, he seems cool, right? Cool as fuck. We hang out and I don't know how it came about, but, oh, somebody posted a picture of us, right? Tag us. I get an inbox from an aunt of mine and she's like, how do you know him? And I, and I said, you know, I met him. She's like, oh yeah, we, we went out, you know, we fucked or whatever. I'm like, oh hell, what? Oh, no. So I, being the generous person I am, I give him the opportunity to tell me, right? I I set him up yeah, in well, a series of... Like, huh? Let me see if he's going to hang himself. Go ahead. Yeah, listen, right. Like, I'm not going to... I don't need to do this. You can hang your own self. What is the Jesus point? Jesus didn't hang Judas. Judas hung himself, okay? That's what oh, I'm saying. He said, yeah, fuck your sister, your aunt. But, but he didn't. I, but 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 I would also like to fuck you, and I like you more. When well, it, when he this. was trying to fuck me, right? And I knew this, because you just know those vibes. But I I got boundaries and standards, so this wasn't somebody I was fucking the first night. Then we have a whole other topic. We don't have to go there. But anyway, so um, I, I set him up for success, right? Uh, let me let you ease you into this conversation because I know it's on your mind. I've seen it in your face and I felt it when I told you who my aunt was. I've seen it all over him. I already knew that he knew I knew and I knew he knew I knew, but he wasn't sure. So he wasn't coming forth with it. So I set him up for success. Here, baby, let me open the door for you to walk through it and just be honest. And he chose not to walk through that door. He chose to keep it under wraps and downplay. Right. He he went around the backside trying to come in, in the back door and still trying to get some for me. Instead of just saying how he knew my aunt, he totally lied about it and was like, oh, yeah, I met her on such shit. No, you stuck your dick in her. Like, stop. Let's just just say what it is. So that alone turned me off because it was like, you sneaky. Just because you didn't say it, you're sneaky. The way that you, the words that he did say showed me that he tiptoed around the truth and he could have just dropped it out of me and like, damn. So I got this story. What happened was I met your aunt and he could have just went boom, boom, boom. And I would have respected him a lot much more. He probably could have got it, right? He maybe, maybe he could have got it if he was honest. Honesty be getting you all kinds of shit with me. So yeah, I don't know. Um, 
that so that's my he he shouldn't have but and and fuck dating sites right because this is my theory on a dating site and people can judge me all they want when I'm single and I I dating traditional conventional dating just is just not for me anymore right it, it, it got to a point where you meet so many fuck boys you meet so many bullshit ass people people just trying to fuck you like I, it's a transfer of energy everything is a transfer of energy for me so you go on these sites and I see these cesspools and that happen that, that's just one of the many dumbass things that happen on these sites and when you're a busy mom and you are, you know, you're, you're trying to build, a, you know, either a career or school or work or whatever it is, you don't really have a lot of time to be entertaining and boot up all the time. And you've got these guys that want to be all up underneath you. And then, but they're, they're, they're leechy, right? So I personally, the only site I ever fucked with was ones that I knew that these guys like sugar daddy sites or sites that are basically an arrangement of a date, right? So, Hey, I want to go out on a date. I want a pretty girl to go out on a date with. I'm going to, and, and they lay it out, right? I'm going to take you to dinner. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You're going to be compensated for your time. And I'm going to be compensated for my time. We don't got to fuck. We can just hang out, but there's none of that. Like, Let's go to the bar. Come home with me. I'm going to buy you two vodka and cranberries, baby, and an Applebee's two for 20, and then we're going to fuck, right? No, fuck that. Like, all of that bullshit is just, it's just too ugh, cringy as fuck. Cringy. So, when any site I ever went on, that was, that's like really the extent of those. And, and, and then you decide, you know, I had a good night. We, we went out, we hung out. I, I, um, got a nice dinner out of it, or we went to a show and he knew that we weren't going to have sex, but I, I still, you know, I got, I got flowers and a nice gift and it compensated for the hundred dollar makeup I had to put on and the outfit and the, this and the, that, and like, I don't know. And then you just keep it moving. I dating like that. If people dated like that, I think they'd just be a lot happier than trying to find the love of their life at a, at a Dooley's or a, Fucking, you know, I know that's my dating rant. <laughs> I just, I just oh, went off. <laughs> Will, Will Farrell turned <laughs> it's, it's subject change. Uh, uh, turned down <laughs> L. Twenty nine dollar, twenty million, twenty nine million dollar pay. Will Farrell said he has declined to return to the Yellow Tights for playing the sequel Christmas Elf Two, despite payout would have made anybody exclaim, "Son of a Nutcracker." In an interview to Hollywood Report, said actor explained that the check for $29 million was waved under his nose to make Elf 2, but he said he walked away because the sequel had premised that he was uncomfortable, sim uh, similar to the first movie. I would have had to promote the movie from an honest place, which ha would have been like, oh, no, it's not good. It could have just turned down the money. So um, what a class act. What is that about? Yeah, he just class. I don't know what they wanted him to do. Maybe they wanted him to be more sexual. I, I don't know. Uh, but um, twenty nine million dollars is not a you know that he turned it down. So there you go. I, you know, I was talking to somebody. I think we've talked to previously. Um, some movies just shouldn't need a sequel. Like just leave them alone. Leave them the fuck alone. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Elf. I thought it was funny. I don't know if I want to see a sequel. You know what I mean? No. So I, I kind of understood it. You said he wanted they wanted him to be more sexual. No, what I'm saying is he didn't. It wasn't. Uh, he didn't like the uh, the premise of the movie. It wasn't the way that they were portraying him. Right. Yeah. It was a total different direction, I guess. So probably more sexual. I'm thinking. You know what I mean? It made two hundred and twenty million dollars at the box mm -hmm. office. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be remade. There, like you said, there's certain movies that just shouldn't shouldn't be redone, remade. Mm -mm, that's one of them. Uh, uh, I know a lot of money to turn down, though. Yeah, that's what I said. He he said he don't feel he didn't feel like. Well, maybe he felt that it was going to hurt him more than help him. Right. Uh, Halloween 2021 Squid Game costumes banned from some New York elementary school. I was asking Narissa what this whole movie is about. I guess it's kind of like Saw, uh, Escape Room, kind of a kind of movie premise. Mm -hmm. I guess a bunch of people that are uh, not uh, less fortunate, you get to play this game 
and if you win, you win like millions of dollars. But uh, some of these costumes, um, they were banned from some of the schools because they knew what the movie was about. So there you go. I haven't watched the movie, but as Narissa said, there's a dub version and then there's a subtitle version. She watched the sub. She said she liked the subtitle version, but um, I don't know. I just can't. I can't watch it. You know, I got U-Haul calling me. I don't know. Let me take. I don't I, know what, you I don't got know. U-Haul calling you. I got people. I got someone texting me asking me for the name of the site, the website <laughs> that I just spoke about. Oh yeah, give me, give me that I just dropped some free that game shit. on these girls. I'm like, listen, ladies, slide in my DM if you want some free game. <laughs> I so, got yeah. you. I'm off well, the market now. I got you, ladies. California school board member caught on hot mic saying, fuck you, parents. Your own path, Scott. Choose your own path. There you go. And I like Scott just said, we are selfish for being vocal. Scott, we are vocal because we are our children's biggest advocates. Okay. <laughs> Choose your own path, Scott. Choose your own path. That was very Thank rude you. of you to say you. parents are selfish. You say Margaret's it. next. Thank you. Your time's up. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Your time is up. Yeah, so Not commercial. So a California school district. Why? I just ended it. School uh, district president was caught on hot mic saying disappearing comments to parents after mother had raised concerns about over vaccinating and mask mandate at public school board meetings. So more of the anti-masker, anti-vaskers at the uh, at the school board meeting. So she went off. She was like, oh, fuck you, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. This just needs to stop. Subway manager. This was a, a story that I put out because I used to own a subway. Me and my brother, mm -hmm. manager. Subway manager accused of sniffing workers out of $38 million when leaving oh. the country. So, uh, and I'll read the story. I, I was just like, what the fuck? Here we go. Uh, I don't know why this... I was reading a story somewhere else. I think it was New York Post. Hold on, let me let me see if I can find it. So basically, he stiffed employees at like thirty eight thousand employees. So oh, here it is, uh, not thirty eight thousand, but several. So it says a regional manager at. I'm waiting for this fucking commercial to come up. A uh, large <laughs> these commercials getting you today. <laughs> large subway franchise who allegedly stiffed workers out of thirty eight million has left the company, which. For years turned in a blind eye to his actions. So there was class actions. News uh, comes after months after the post revealed that the chain was standing behind a manager who oversees roughly a thousand Northern California residents, uh, California restaurants, despite claiming court documents were unpaid nearly 3,000 workers. The manager uh, Patel said he was leaving the company in November 7th to spend more time with his family. According to the message sent to restaurants, he oversee that seen by the post he still owed about 15 restaurants as a franchise oh he still owned 15 restaurants was no longer work for the company corporate office last year despite the challenge we face in the industry it was eye-opening for me he said that in this email show me more importance being good father or nothing should be more important than family so he stiffed over three thousand people in subway i was like why employees and, um, you know, I got to be honest with you, when I was uh, uh, a Subway franchisee, there was a lot of guys that owned 30, 20 stores. And basically they were trying to stiff, you know, because they're teenagers, right? They're trying to stiff teenagers out of money. And that's mm. basically what the story went. And it was 3,000 employees that they stiffed. Mm. So if you're taking, you know, $20 a year, $20, you know what I'm saying? It adds up. Mm-hmm. It does add up. So this was an interesting story. I thought this was pretty cool. Sitting Bull's great great grandson identified through DNA. A living descendant of fame Luke leader Sitting Bull has been confirmed using the novel technique for analyzed 
fragments of historic figures of DNA. So um, Weather Sly of Prof- uh, I'm trying to see who the name of the, the guy is, but they they identified his living relative. I think that's mm. awesome. Yeah. Did they say how old the living relative was? I'm look. I'm trying to scan through it. I'm he sorry. must be pretty oh. old if he didn't know, and you know, like his mother or his mother. Seventy-three. Okay, so he was probably the last of his generation that was alive because I would doubt his mother would still be alive if he was 73. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how they didn't know this. I don't He's know. He's a well, grandchild? Yeah, yeah. So this would have been his mother's father or, or father's father? The two, yeah. He probably maybe did. He, he, maybe. maybe he just, maybe they passed away young and he just, maybe he was adopted. Maybe he was put off or put sent, you know, to a different family. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy that he didn't learn until he was 73 though. Kind of yeah. sad, but it's cool though. You know, it's cool to know that, but it could have really, his life could have maybe went a whole different way. Right. So this was a crazy story. Brawl breaks out of church after trespass man. This approached. Is- Oh, I caught parts of this. I was like, what in the fuck? You are in trespass. You need to leave this church right now. If somebody did disappear, they got this. Oh. Get out of the trespass of this church. You head off. You head off. I'm not supposed to have this church. You are in trespass. Oh, snatch him up. Get him. Get him. Get him off. Oh, hell! I got. I got to be honest with you. You, you want to know the best part? You see that motherfucker didn't get up not one time in the background. The reverend or the, the reverend, the, the priest didn't get up not one motherfucking time. He was like, the Lord, I got the Lord protecting me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> me and the Lord. We we good. So he didn't even flinch. He didn't try. Like I was watching him the whole time. Like, this motherfucker gonna get up? No, nope. it says instead of catching the Holy Ghost, the one man caught these hands. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker, catch these motherfucking hands! <laughs> Get up! In the altar without wearing a mask. He's a and gangster. Other church, other church goers gave him a. <laughs> I'm crying, it's funny. <laughs> he was just chilling over there, like, chilling the oh. whole motherfucking time. As soon as he ran up on him, I was like, "Oh, he gonna stand up?" He got no, no. And then when they all came at him, the table almost got at the altar is almost knocked over. <laughs> he's a, fucking flinched. I'm, I'm gonna go to hell, but he's probably thinking, "Damn, Tommy looked really good in the altar boy uniform." Oh, you better stop that. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "My man's, my man's strong. Look, yes. <laughs> all these strong ass men coming up here to protect little old me." <laughs> Oh, he didn't fucking believe. That's the best part. I was like, this motherfucker ain't moving. No. <laughs> Out of all of that chaos, he didn't unbothered as fuck. Yeah. Unbothered. I got the Lord to protect me, motherfucker. So I was second I was <laughs> the game, and Michigan was winning, but the University of Michigan versus Michigan State football game draws national attention. It, the Michigan was winning. They are losing now on in the second uh, with five minutes left. Uh, State is up 14-13. Go green, go green. Go green, go white, fight, fight, fight. So, uh, you know, once again, another – we're trying not to say – talk about sports. We're just talking about certain things. Yeah, there goes the- and so I pack my car with people from all over town, and we go downtown. What's up with these commercials? Um – Joey Corneville out as Panthers coach in the wake of Blackhawks sexual assault investigation reveals ex 
blackouts coach was accused of not doing more with Kyle Beach, brought up to sexual alleged charges in 2010. Yeah, what was that about? It says Kyle Beach was number 12 Chicago Blackhawks skates against Detroit Red Wings during the pregame. I guess he was he sexually assaulted uh, one of the players. Maybe he uh, was in the shower and was like, "Hey, nice ass. I would like to." Your 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 sexual assault voice kills me every time. In case you were wondering, I like your hairy ass, and uh, I would like to boss if you could. Give me, have you been? If okay. you could just put your balls on my forehead, I really is would. There, is there? What the? But I'm done. I gotta go. Goodbye. So I guess he. I guess he. I guess the. I guess maybe a hockey player. The guy uh, dropped. Your sexual assault voice is great, by the way. He dropped the soap. He's like, "Are you gonna pick that soap up?" <laughs> I unplugged my mic. I had to leave. I unplugged my mic. He said, "Are you gonna pick that soap up with the hair on it?" Oh, Ew. Sorry. Ew. Where do you get this shit from? Uh, so this was a story you <laughs> Never shared. Mind. <laughs> I just discussed it with Narissa. She says it's bullshit, Fred. Like I what was like, it? bullshit, Fred. Uh, we ain't rich. I ain't rich. Shaquille O'Neal says his kids mm -hmm. need to make their own money. He so said, he said, he said, y'all, we ain't rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm <laughs> rich. That's we, funny. we are not rich. Right, since then, my mom, my mom I, I used to always tell my mom, I'm like, Mom, you know you got money. You rich. And she's like, uh, I got money. I got money. How about this? You don't. <laughs> you don't got money. Did your parents growing up, your parents didn't never tell you when they got their tax return or none of that shit, right? Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays, kids know when you get your tax. Oh, mama getting taxes. They got this, they did that. Uh -uh. My mom didn't tell me none of that shit. We didn't know. It's we didn't welcome. know what we had, when we had it. None of that. It was none of our fucking business because we didn't have money. She well, he had said money. they need to get their degree, and that's what I told mm -hmm. her. Yes. As a millionaire, billionaire, whatever the fuck he is, I think he's a millionaire. Yes. Degree, you got to present a business plan to him, mm -hmm. and then you're eligible for the money. Here you go. My kids yeah. are older, and they're kind of upset with me. Not really upset, but they, they don't understand because I tell them all the time, We ain't rich, I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't No, You got to, you got to have bachelor's or master's, and then if you want me to invest in one of your companies, you're gonna have to present it. Boom, 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 bring it to me. I'll let you know, I'm not giving you nothing. My that's, kids are older now. Isn't that awesome? I mean, that should be everyone. You shouldn't be handed a golden silver spoon. Here you go. Um, you mm -hmm. know, this, this is new money, right? So my mom used to say, oh, they got old money. They got, oh, they got that old money. Yeah, they're talking about they, old. They from Girls Point. They got that old money. No, but they, you're talking about the Rockefellers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Black entrepreneurs, Hispanic entrepreneurs, they you got to earn this. We're not That's just going to over to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you gotta, if you want me to invest, you got to come up with a business plan. Boom, boom, right. boom. I'm not giving you shit. Right, I worked for this. I didn't just get this handed down from my grandparents, grandparents, grandparents. We talked about a story with Dr. Dre and one of his kids were broke and all that. You think that's what he was probably saying? Hey, you know what? I'm not just going to give you my money. You think probably. that's... Yeah. Probably. I think that, uh, too, I think that story about Dre, sh there was some, um, he had backlash, but I think also, um, yeah, there was some something going on with her and he had supported enough where it was like, OK, you got a tough love. You right. got to draw the line. Right. I can understand, though. You know, you got to do it from the start. You can't just tough love after you've been giving, 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 because you're setting your child up for failure with all that giving, giving, giving. Now you want to wham, cut him off. I think uh, Shaquille O'Neal is very intelligent man, human, just a great all around being. Right. And he wants what's best for his children. I don't think he's going to let them not succeed. I think he's going to set them up for success. But when he says I'm rich. We are not. I, 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 he's correct in saying that and and teaching them that what you want, you have to work for. And a degree is not easy to get, you know, coming up with a business plan and a business idea and, and all of these 
things. Yeah, being the father, being him being your father probably opens up a lot more opportunities for you to do those things. But I think he realizes that. And so he's going to make sure his kids are going to capitalize on all of those things before he's given them anything. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Pushing them to their fullest potential, like he should be. Hmm. Uh, I guess he was, I don't think he, he actually finished his degree. I don't know, but I guess he said that he is planning to graduate from LSU, LSU where he went to college. So uh, maybe just, you know, he just wants his kids to have a better life. Uh, we'll jump oh, over. He's, he's graduating as well? Yeah, he's graduating from that's LSU. That's awesome. So World Series, I know that's going on, and I know we're, we're missing Alex, but so the Braves go up uh, almost. Braves take a game three over Astros, nearly throw a no-hitter. They were 2-0. Two, uh, two uh, they won last night, so they go up 2-1 on the World Series. So, uh, oh, they we'll, won? Okay. Yeah, we'll leave that for Alex, but there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, staying in the MLB world, uh, I, I shared this uh, this uh, story with Rissa. She thought it was ludicrous. PETA, PETA is kind of crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. to, it's MLB renamed bullpen to armpit or arm barn instead of uh, it is insensitive to cows. So Chris goes, did they go out and interview a cow? What's going on? Yeah, what cow did they interview? She's right. I want to see the clip. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know it's offensive to a cow? Yeah, so there goes PETA. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But you know, PETA always want to rename some shit. Uh, yeah. So if you're a cheesehead, last Thursday they beat. Learning about our history with Ancestry DNA inspired us to learn more about. Uh, if you're a cheesehead, they beat the uh, Red Cardinals. Cardinals were undefeated. Uh, Packers were 6-1. and one. Cardinals were 7-0. and oh. um, mm -hmm. I watched this game, and actually the Cardinals mm -hmm. actually beat the, the Packers. It was a really yeah. good game. They um, played a great game. Yeah, the Cardinals just beat themselves at the end. Uh, the guy did at the last – he could have scored a touchdown. It would have been over. Uh, Packers mm -hmm. would have lost. But mm – -hmm. uh, you know, I got to say, uh, Ringo Starr came through. There it is. The Chiefs yeah. has given the Cardinals their first loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an amazing game. I didn't watch the full game. I watched all the clips and, and you know, tuned in after after I got the text that, that the Cardinals lost. And, you know, my mom was talking her shit, her cheese head shit, right? But um, it was a great game. I love games like that. I like when there's, you know, the competition and – and they fight for that win. So they did. Cardinals had to take their L, walk away. Oh. Um, we were, you know, it was crazy because I didn't, um, I didn't even realize it was Thursday. Things have been just so, you know, we, we've been going, going, going all week. And I um, was driving down the freeway and I look over at the stadium and I said, um, I said, wow, the stadium looks pretty. The sun was shining on the the side of it, and it just we had it lit up. And then I go, man, what's going on there? Look at all the cars. And it was a sea of cars, right, just down the entire freeway that trickled into the um, the shopping center next door and all of Westgate uh, Entertainment District. And and my son goes, uh, he's like what day is it? It's Thursday. It's Thursday night football. I said, Oh damn the football game. But I have, I've seen the stadium filled with cars, but this past Thursday, man, they, it went for miles and miles. The amount of cars that were there. I, I was like, wow, that's incredible. People were walking far to get to that game. So there was definitely some whole vibes going on up in that stadium. It was pretty cool to see. Yeah. I wouldn't have been walking that fucking far, though. <laughs> Hell no. That shit was far. So uh, today's topic, that's all I have for the show. But today's topic is the Devil's Night, the rise and fall of Devil's Night, and eventually turn into Angel's Night. Devil's Night in Detroit is deadly Halloween tradition. Uh, there's more. There's been more than 800 fires during the worst Devil Night uh, in Detroit. Uh, Devil's Night started... Uh, it looks like it. I was looking at the the history. Devil's Night goes back all the way to the original in 1940 in Detroit. Um, I didn't know it went back that far. I thought maybe it was after the riots. Um, 
But uh, it was also based on a movie, The Crow. If you remember, it was supposed to be in Detroit, and it was Devil's mm -hmm. Night. Uh, so we made national uh, media, national. We were in the entertainment world. But it was because, uh, you know, Detroit's always had <laughs> a black eye because of riots, uh, because of Devil's Night. So we've been always the black eye of the Midwest because of we had – oh, you came from Detroit? You're probably, you're probably a criminal. Um, so Devil's Night Traces is the originals back to 1940. Um, I'm gonna let me see if I can play this video. Uh, this was in 2011. <laughs> Ellery or whatever. So there was another house that was going on fire. But uh, I, I remember as a kid, uh, my parents wouldn't even allow me. Uh, oh, Devil no, you couldn't, you couldn't go anywhere on Devil's Night. Yeah, because they knew all the fires. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you had to stay in. 1991 uh, emulated the typical Detroit experience. Uh, and it was kind of a Detroit thing. Uh, you know what I mean? So... Uh, enforced, and I remember where they enforced the city curfew, gas line, gas, uh, gasoline restrictions. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd have. Remember, do you remember your Nate? They'd have um, the neighbors that would go out and kind of like walk the little street areas, trying to patrol in their neighborhoods. Yeah, because we had, yeah. So we eventually moved on to Angels Night, and I was getting to get to that. Uh, so. You know, just as a kid, Detroit. Well, be before you get to that, even before the Angels Night, there would be like you know your little your little neighbors who kind of nosy busybodies. They would be like, okay, everybody on this night, we're gonna watch each other's house, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't remember. You. No, no, that's problem. When we came, when I came here, and I'm like, oh, it's Devil's Night. And my friends are like, what's that? I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that's, that's the fucking city on fire. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, fun shit. Yeah, we're gonna light. We're gonna light people's houses on fire. Doesn't that sound fun? Right. What? We're gonna do what? Yeah, this they were like, like felony. <laughs> they were like, what? What is that? Yeah, that's a right. I just grew up always knowing that this was a, This is what it was. I don't think I ever knew any different until um, who you're gonna talk about the angels' night, but when they started flipping it, right? It was like, we don't say Devil's Night anymore. It's Google Five. Five. Google Five. So uh, another favorite one of my movies, Crow, uh, and I'm going to bring it on the screen and why this ad plays. Skip the ad, but here you go. Seems our friend t won't be joining us this evening on account of a slight case of death. Mm. Sit down. Uh, uh, uh. Well, well, well. Devil's Night is upon us again. So we throw a little party, start a bunch of fires, make a little profit. I like the pretty lies. <laughs> Problem is, it's all been done before. You see what I'm saying? There's no reason to quit. Wrong. So it was, a, it was a tradition. Uh, you know, people would go out and set fires. And like I said, a movie was emulated after it uh, just because we were, we made nationwide press. Uh, because we had this bad stigma of the city would go up in blaze on mm -hmm. October 30th. And there was a lot of people didn't know what that was. Uh, but I, it, maybe it was profit for a lot of businesses because I could burn my business down and maybe make an insurance claim. I, I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. You said, I remember that because I got a little bit older. I remember, um, family members i overheard somebody say yeah they're gonna burn their business you know that 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 was probably an insurance claim that probably was that was probably done by them you know that that stigma i remember i remember hearing overhearing adults say those things yeah so what it says curfew started uh detroit residents if you're under 18 uh eventually it became to uh angels night because they just wanted to get rid of that bad stigma Detroit has a long history of destructive fires during the nights before Halloween. Last year, this is an old article, I reported in, that in 1984, the city of Detroit had logged over 
800 fires on the night that was known as Devil's Night. Ever since then, the city has worked to fight back. So uh, eventually it became, you know, they got neighborhood patrols, watch your neighborhood, keep your lights on, display orange ribbon. You remember mm -hmm. that? Sirens, a lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, would go on a patrol and, you know, make sure they wouldn't start fires. But, you know, there was a lot yeah, of- Yeah, they put the lights on their cars and drive around. Yeah. <clears throat> so eventually it became Angels Nights. And then uh, they were for three nights, the 29th, 30th, and 31st, mm -hmm. uh, Detroit's crew and ordinance. And then, uh, so that's basically what happened, Detroit. They started fighting back because we, they were gang members or whatever that was going on. They were just burning buildings. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they wanted there was people to. People that were dying. There was people that were getting hurt, families, you know, burning building businesses, all of that. So. Yeah, it says, uh, so this was uh, uh, during Duggan's time, and he's still the mayor. Three and a half decades after the Ukraine cautionary tale due to 800 plus fires in 84, the city is ready to turn the page on the bad old days, distancing himself uh, from the sanitary angel night adopted in 1997. So 97 is when they came, uh, angels night. But angel nights is our, our over, the Detroit police chief. Uh <clears throat> Mayor uh, Mike Duggan and Angel Knights patrols that go with it, but put an end to it. So really, uh, they're going to end Angels Night. Yeah, this is an old article. I guess it was it was ended a couple of years ago. So, um, you know, they just said they were they just tired of the stigma. You know what I mean? The bad yeah. stigma. It's don't they don't want to be associated with that. Uh, but I got to be honest with you. When I think of Detroit, I definitely think of. A couple things, right? Mm -hmm. bad, bad boys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a uh, uh, negative negativity. Bad mm -hmm. boys, devil's night, um, riots. So I think they wanted to bridge the gap and get rid of all that bad negative stigma. Um, and they're just, you know, Detroit's been slowly changing their image. Um, you know, um, big corporations have moved downtown, uh, Corktown, all that stuff. You know, all that. Uh, has turned into positivity. So I think that's the reason why they went from Devil's Night to Angel's Night to let's not even be nothing. associated with that and let's move the fuck on. So Right, nothing, Night. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is a about Devil's Night. I can't No, my mom just commented, and yeah, this is true. So, and I didn't even think of this. So we, we grew up, um, we, I grew up on a street and my house backed up to the uh, fire station at Whittier and Gratiot, Houston Whittier and Gratiot. Um, and she just said, we lived behind the fire station at Whittier and Gratiot in the height of the, de you know, the height of the devil's night era. Uh, and it was crazy. And it was, it was just, we didn't sleep that night. You just heard the sirens all night long, you know, going on. And, and it, the good thing, though, is our street was pretty protected, right? Because we were right behind the fire station, like our backyard. We could see the tower from our backyard. We were right there. So um, it probably, you know, gave the people on our block a little bit more uh, you know what? I, security I didn't, and trust to think about that. Yeah, I know a retired fireman uh, that was in the city of Detroit probably during those times. I wish I could. I, I didn't even think about it. I should have got him on and, and mm. probably and had him regulate, uh, recall all the problems that Detroit probably went through in the eighties. So he, yeah. probably, he probably saw some, a lot of crazy shit. I'm sure. Yeah. That's crazy. I got to think about that for next year, but mm -hmm. that's pretty much all I had. I don't really have a lot of stories because I can't remember, uh, devil's night. Cause I, I don't think I remember any stories. Cause my parents would be like, get your ass in the house. Get your what? ass in the house. Yeah, the light, the light, the the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the We ain't going out. We're not going nowhere. The street lights are on, and guess what? You know, and I, I think I told the story before. My mom would uh, just so this is pre cell phones. My mom would go on the porch, and I'd be down like <laughs> four <laughs> street. And hey, I wait, how would she say it? Do it again. And and she, and <laughs> I would be down four streets. And I would be riding my bike. And, <laughs> hey, your mom, your mom's call. Your mom's looking for you. And I, this is free cell phone. So, right, you know, you're like, how the fuck? Yeah, she was out there on the porch. I heard her shouting, you know. Mm-hmm. The, the infamous shout. 
<laughs> I'm still laughing at your <laughs> your your mom impersonation. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't really have much either. Um, tomorrow is Halloween, so all you spooky ghouls and goblins can't wait to see all the kids' pictures on my timeline. Um, they make me happy. I, I'm not celebrating this year for uh, personal reasons, and so um, it's my favorite holiday. So it's it's sad for me. It was Zach's favorite holiday as well. Um, <laughs> So seeing those things and, and you know, it, it's sad, but it's happy, too, because it, it, you know, keeps that spirit alive for me. Um, and I know that he he's probably upset with me that I'm not celebrating because he he loved it. But he I know he understands. So, um, yeah, I don't really have much. I'm going to be. All right. So uh, here's cuddled up with a scary movie or something. Yeah, uh, this is what I was describing, uh, and I know you were talking about Zach and his favorite holiday, but I yeah. wanted to go back real quick, and here you go. Yo, Paulie, you're sitting with me. I'll call you back later. <laughs> That's what my mom was. It's your mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was a calling. So let's go back into the thing. I know this is. Uh, I just wanted to play that before you. Went. The what? Yeah. Go back into the. I know it was a favorite holiday, uh, mm -hmm. and I know last year during the podcast he dressed up as a witch. I and did. He, he loved it. Loved so, it. He so, loved it. I thought you know that's so funny. You said it this morning. I was like, so I put my no. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But. I, I think next year I'm going to throw a party and it's even though it's a Halloween party in my head, it's going to be a party in his honor. Aww. So that's my, that is my goal to do next year. I, I, you know, I, every year I, every holiday, I always made it a big deal, you know, even like it was like, even the, just the smallest holidays, I'm, I'm, I got a whole house decorated for Valentine's day, right. Things like that. So I, d I don't want to lose that because I know that that was something he looked forward to. So it's just taken me a minute to get back there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, grieving is a process. We know that. It absolutely is. It's a grieving the process. So, uh, where as, as we say that, make sure guys, I know we talk about it all the time. And if we don't talk about it every episode, I apologize, but check on your, check on your, um, uh, check on your friends, your, your relatives, um, uh, make sure they're okay. Absolutely. I don't know what they're going through. So, uh, mm -hmm. so mental illness is a, is a problem and, uh, you know, check on somebody. If you haven't heard from somebody, check on them, see mm -hmm. how they, see how they doing. I never, read. Um, you never know. Read. And when you're down, and I don't mean to cut you off. When you're down, yeah, yeah. remember, um, uh, someone's always has it worse. So check in on. Go ahead. So, yeah, somebody's begging for your problems. Yeah. Um, I read a post yesterday, and they just said, you know, treat your loved ones as if you won't see them tomorrow. Yeah. That kind of that stuck with me. So definitely, uh, yeah, check on your loved ones. Come <laughs> from a place of love. Uh, treat everyone with kindness. You never right. know what the next person is going through. That's a great costume right there. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, I'm trying to enlarge it. My it's, eyes uh, have tears in them, and one of them's like all fucked up, so I can't read right uh, now. He's got a job application on his face, and it says, Boo, I, did I scare you? I'm a job application. <laughs> oh, hell. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are we about to? Okay, I thought we were at the end of the show, but do we want to talk about that too? No, I don't want to talk about it. I just wanted to. Okay. Put it in fucking motherfucker. <laughs> mm -hmm. He got a lot of nerve, don't he? That's the best. No. That is the best. He a trumper. That is the best costume ever. <laughs> now you got me laugh. Tears. I got tears from laughing. So, yeah, I can't wait. Just uh, make sure you guys are safe. Uh, and I know this is an old tradition, but in Detroit, it happened, right? Because people are devilish because of devilish. Make sure you guys are checking in candies. I know some parents. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that there was razor blades and poison and candy as we were a kid in the city of Detroit. 
So make sure, even though I, it's funny because my ex-wife, we, you know, we'd get candy. Check the candy, check the candy. I was like, baby, we're in Phoenix. <laughs> we're in Phoenix. Like, check the candy. I'm like, don't give it to Narissa. And, you know, we would check the candy because, you know, that we, I remember as a kid, you know, that was a thing. They would put razor blades in. So all kinds mm -hmm. of shit. You guys are just being safe out there. Um, you know, they said stay, it's okay to, to do trick-or-treating. Just make sure the kids are staying a, a distance from the person that's passing out candy. And if you have to put a mask on, I know it sucks. But, you know, just be careful out there, guys. Check your kids' candies. Make sure it's safe. Uh, and you guys have a, a blessed and safe Halloween. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, once again, uh, wanted to talk about if you need to advertise on the show and to feature business needs, reach out to me. Um, definitely go out, you know, reach out. Uh, if you go to wordonthestreetpod.com um, and definitely um, you can reach out to me there and advertise. Uh, if you go to Word on the Street merch, we did uh, put Alex T. Uh, we'll talk more about it, but uh, time is getting late here and I got to get to things. Uh, we added Alex C's, um T-shirt on there. Uh, the wrestling, uh, all in all things wrestling will be added on their hats and stuff. So you constantly mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. uh, there's constantly new products on there. Uh, and it's hoodie season. So get your hoodie. Uh, I think Jamie, a buddy of mine of the show that uh, got his red hoodie. So I got a green hoodie and I got one of those soft fleece ones. Oh man, it is so soft. The Savage Kitty one. I'm like, oh, this is like a soft blanket. There you That's, go. Yes. That's I got so many compliments on my green hoodie yesterday. Like I had dudes who was like, I was like, oh, people checking me out in my green. I see you. <laughs> yes. Cop, cop that gear, folks. Get it. Get cop that merch. Cop that gear. So uh, mm -hmm. we don't have a guest the rest of the month, so we're over. Uh, definitely Breast Cancer Awareness is ending tomorrow. So make sure you guys are supporting the, the breast cancer. Save the tatas. Save the tatas. So Wednesday, we got a buddy that was on the show on the 100th episode. Eventually, maybe I'm going to tag, actually, Quincy in this episode. Maybe, or not Quincy, um, but uh, to Q, because mm -hmm. guess what? Guess what? He uh, mm -hmm. still haven't got to that, that 100th episode. So let me let me put oh, yeah. it in. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so Q will be on next week? Q will be on Wednesday. Uh but uh, I'm going to put. That's going to be a funny episode. He's a silly ass dude. And you're a silly ass dude. And I'm just silly because, you know, we're my. I can already feel my cheeks hurting from laughing. I know it's coming. Oh, I think I have to go. I'm going to tag. That's going to be a funny show. Y'all definitely going to not want to miss that. Yeah, Quincy Lewis, he has uh, multiple podcasts that he does. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Miles Dixon, which is uh, AKA Doc. So definitely check out his, his podcast. And I'm going to go to that. Just let me. Yeah, he has several, right? Yeah, let me just tag. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Somebody go ahead. I know when we, um, we, when we were in town in Detroit, we got to go and sit in on one of his podcasts. And man, they were, they had us clowning that morning one. Hey, I, they, I was laughing so hard. My, my stomach was hurting from them. They're so, so funny. Lots of, lots of good uh, vibes from his show. So excited for him to be a guest on Wednesday. Right. Mm-hmm. Trying to find him. I can't find him. He'd be posting some funny shit, too. Did you see his post about big boy season the other day? uh -huh. Okay, so he said it was, uh, you know, he, he's a larger man. He wanted the big voice, and it said it's big, and every woman wants a, uh, it was a TikTok, and basically it said every woman wants a, a big boy during this time until, right? So they see the girl and the guy, they're all booed up, they're rubbing on each other on the couch, right? And then it pans out to, like, bedtime, and he's got a CPAP machine on his face because he's so big, he needs a CPAP machine. <laughs> And the girl's just staring at him like, what the fuck? And, you know, if anybody has ever heard of CPAP, BiPAP, any of these machines, they're loud. It's a big, like, oh, it's a whole ass mask with a tube on your face, right? It's not sexy. All sexiness out the window at that point. But the, the whole thing had me rolling because he said, I don't know if I should laugh or feel attacked because this shit's funny as hell. So then you go into the feed, right? And I'm laughing because Zach wore a BiPAP. 
And, you know, I know people that have a, a CPAP, them motherfuckers are loud, right? Disrupting the whole, anybody around you is not sleeping. <laughs> so he said, somebody in the feed had said, uh, please tell me you waited till the second date or you weren't getting no pussy if you put that on there on the first night. He said, homeboy, I'll be getting pussy with this thing on. Bitches be fixing my mask for me in the middle of the night. And he had me roast. <laughs> But then you got to scroll on his page because I, I watched that damn video at least 10 times. I was laughing so fucking hard because that shit was the truth. That was the real fucking truth. That's funny. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, when you go through people's feed and you hear about, uh, you you read them damn comments, that, that really set it up. <laughs> so shout out to all the big boys out there. You know, boot up. We're in a bypass. There's bypass and CPAP. There's a woman out there that'll fix, fix your mask for you in the middle of the night. They got you. <coughs> fish. On the <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Give you the pussy and fix the mask. It's okay, fellas. It's your time to shine. <coughs> <laughs> oh, that shit was funny. <laughs> oh, here's a, yeah. So this is uh, Q. He, uh, sorry, I was uh, trying to tag. Uh, Miles. Okay. So here you go. Uh, this is his uh, merge site. You go to it. It is a uh, part of. Oh. Yeah. That's what's good. his brand again? A uh, part of my east side. I don't know why it's not coming up. Yeah. So part of east side. Uh, he's from East Detroit, but uh, there is his stuff. Part of my east side. I got to come. Mm -hmm. I got. He's got some Detroit veteran hats. Yeah. Pardon my east side, east side. What did he say? Detroit made me. And then he is, he shouts out his zip code. He said, prepared him for the world. I forget what zip he's from. 480 something. 48032, something like that. But he says, yeah, yeah. He's got he's got some cool Detroit merch. If you're if you are a Detroit veteran, you from the D, definitely want to check it out. Or if you just want to rep the shit, check it out. You know, hey. you put that on, people think you're a gangster. So here's his, uh, with you. Uh, I shared the wrong page, but here's his, uh, his, he's got the wake and bake show. So he, uh, great name to be honest with mm -hmm. you, smoke weed and all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. there is the wake and bake show. i play a little bit of it. Shit. I ain't in that bitch, mom. Shit. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, I don't see if it's got to do with it. It's got to do with it. I'll be hooking my shit up. Do this nigga work for him. It's good. Oh, I know what it is too, though. We can't read no comments. That's probably the main thing. So, no. I mean, I can probably. So that's the wake and bake show. I had so much fun, bro. Like honestly, my birthday is around Halloween time. My brother's birthday around Halloween time. Our birthdays was we got like like nine cousins around Halloween time. So we threw a big ass Halloween party every. So the show topic was show uh, Halloween best Halloween moments in movies. So mm -hmm. tune in Wednesday uh, five what thirty okay. p. Pacific time. 8.30 Eastern time, and that is Wednesday with Quincy. What they call him Q? We're on the, yeah, we were on the, what, what show were we on? Like uh, morning show or something? Uh, yeah, that was the podcast girl. Then, they, you know, they all, he does the girth, the girth yeah, show. The girth uh, show, which is so another good one. He block radio podcast network. That's his, that's his brand. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, he does some shows from there. So, yeah. Tune in Wednesday. There you go. It's gonna be a good, good show. Fun vibes. Yeah, I know we went a little longer than we than we should. I'm but sorry. We're fucking fabulous. So, uh, we miss you, Alex. Uh, see you on Wednesday. See you there on Wednesday. Spotlight Wednesday. 
Uh, and then we uh, will be back. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. All I got. You can follow me on, on Drink Shift. Make sure. Thanks for all the listeners that are tuning in. Make sure you are subscribing. Get hit, hit that ding, 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 ding. Hit the ding, 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 dong. Ding, oh. ding, dong. Ding, 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 dong. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Bring a ding, ding, and your slippity doos. <laughs> yeah, you can follow me, Tori Rochelle, on Facebook at All Beauty All Beast on Instagram, The Savage Kitty, that's C H E E Savage Kitty on Twitter, and Tori Smooches on Snapchat. Yep. There you go. You can follow me on all those platforms, and we'll play this video and we'll get out of here. Make sure you guys have a safe and fun Halloween. Make sure you check yeah. in those candy, guys. Okay, so here's candy. And send me some. I take candy donations too, just so you know. So make sure you guys are always washing your hands, wearing a mask, and washing your ass. Stay safe. Happy Halloween. Bye.